Good evening, and welcome to Dash 28 Live. Uh, I'm Mike Atkins, and uh, I'll be your host for this evening as we bring you a second round call to arms matchup uh, between Mark Campbell and Mike Zettelmeyer. Uh, with me this evening, offering uh, insightful commentary and incisive jabs, are uh, Britton Williams. Hi. Hello, Britton. Uh, Alex Chavez. <laughs> and Ashley Smashley Mowat. Uh, we lost Mark for a moment. I'll add him back to the screen here. There he is. Sweet. Uh, yep. So this is going to be a second round uh, call to arms match. You guys are going to be playing Pillage, uh, and you guys are going to be playing uh, Mark Scott Basileans, and Mike has Northern Alliance. So I'm going to bring up uh, Mark's list and uh, let him talk us through it. All right. What do you got? All right. Did we lose Mark? Are you muted? All right. Well, we'll just go top to bottom here. Uh, um, so, so, I guess to start off. I think we're having trouble getting your mic off there. I've got uh, regiments of men and arms. Oh, am I muted? Can uh, you hear me? Now, yeah. That's better. Keep going, Mark. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Keep going. I can. Uh, I think we're getting some lag. Are you able to hear me? You guys? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Uh, okay, I think Mark is having uh, some mic oh, trouble, so I'm just here. going to I'm going to mute you for a moment, and I'll just read through your list real quick because uh, I'm not sure why you're not getting through. Um, let's see if I can get that going. Uh, so he's got two regiments of men at arms swordsmen. He's got uh, three regiments of paladin foot guard, and he's upgraded one to paladin defenders. And the other two, he's exchanged the shields for two-handed weapons, lowering their defense and gaining crushing strength one. He's got two hordes of palace guard, one with chalice of wrath and one with uh, the boots of striding. He's got two regiments of alohi. He's got an Uralohi with blade of slashing, as you do. Uh, he's got a priest with bane chant and the conjurer's staff. He's got two ogre palace guard captains, one with mesa crushing and one with the crystal pendant. And he's got Samacris. We're going to end at a total unit strength of uh, 29 with 14 drops. So I will bring up Mike's list now. Let him talk to that. Apologies for the technical difficulties there, folks. These things happen when you do stuff live. So let's bring up. Mike's list. Okay. What do you got, Mike? All right, so I got a horde of human clansmen. They're basically blood sworn of old. Got a troop of half elf berserkers. Uh, two regiments of snow foxes. They're swarms. Uh, two hordes of ice elementals. This nice icy breath that I've been liking. Uh, I've got a regiment of tundra wolves, which are now a pretty decent light cab unit. Uh, Frostfang, which are heavy, uh, large infant, or monstrous 
Low large cavalry. Uh, two ice can bolt throwers. A Thane that has Talonar standard, so he gives Rally one. And I also gave him an inspiring talisman. Uh, then I got a Lord on a Frostfang, but I gave Life Leech one, two. An Ice Queen that's got Surge eight. And Harim, the legendary ice giant. Cool. All right. And the legendary ice giant, he gets he still gets icy breath, right? Yep. Twelve is... instead of eight. Okay. All right. And let's now pop over to the battlefield. All right. Uh, let's see if we can add Mark back in now. Okay, so uh, this is the battlefield hey, that you guys have. Are you able to hear me now? Yeah, much better. Can hear you. Ah, perfect. Great. Uh, okay, so we're gonna we're we're gonna go through the battlefield here real quick. So you guys picked one of the epic dwarf maps, right? Uh, yeah. Twelve. We got, got number turn. twelve. Okay, cool. Uh, and you guys are playing pillage. And are these little red and white stars? Are those the uh, those the objectives? Yeah. Yep, those are the objective markers there. Okay, and you guys have six of them out. Cool. All right, uh, so going through the yep. deployments, uh, we got Mark uh, up here on the top with his, with his Basileans and uh, Mike down on the bottom. So, uh, Mark, if you could walk us through uh, your deployments starting from the left. Sure. I'll just grab one of these little guys here. So going from the left, we've got the Ur Elohi over here with the Blade of Slashing. Uh, followed by that, we have uh, one regiment of Elohi. Uh, then we've got uh, a unit of the Paladin Foot Guard um, with the Crushing Strength upgrade, so their Defense 4, where they got Crushing 1. Uh, then we've got a unit of Men at Arms up in the front here, uh, just stock standard Men at Arm regiment. Uh, we have a regiment of the uh, of the Paladin Guard Defenders, uh, so, so they've been upgraded to give the Elite Aura to all the Paladin Infantry within 6 inches. Um, I guess going back here, we have the priest. Uh, he's the one that's got the heal, uh, heal three, bane chant two, and the conjurer staff. Uh, we have the third regiment of the paladin foot guard. Uh, these ones here also have the two-handed weapon upgrade, um, and all three all three paladin units have have an aegis fragment. Uh, then I've got uh, Sam and Chris over here. And then we've got one unit of Elohi uh, in behind this unit of. Ogre Paladin Guard, uh, or Ogre Palace Guard, uh, and they've got the boots of striding. Uh, then we've got one Ogre Captain uh, with the Mace of Crushing, the one with the little blue plume. And we've got the one with the pink plume. This one here is Ogre Captain uh, with the Pendant of Retribution. Uh, we have another Ogre Palace Guard Horde with uh, the Chalice of Fury, um, or the Chalice of Wrath, so they have Fury. And then we've got the last regiment of swordsmen over here in the corner. Great. All right. And uh, Mike, starting over here on the left. Yep. So that's Haram on the left there. Uh, I've got two snow foxes up front. Behind them, I've got two ice elementals. Then I've got the ice queen in the middle and some uh, ice or uh, half elf berserkers in the middle there, too. Two uh, ice kin bolt throwers. There's my Thane there with the Rally 1 and Inspiring. There's the Humans. There's the Dire Fangs. There's the Lord on a Dire Fang. And there's the Tundra Wolves. Okay. Great. So thanks a lot, guys. If you could just uh, give us little status updates in the chat window so we can follow along um, as you guys play. You guys haven't rolled for first turn yet, have you? Nope. Okay, no, great. we haven't rolled for that yet. Cool. All right, uh, then I'm going to say uh, good luck, have fun. Uh, you guys have uh, you. fun playing your game, and uh, we'll be we'll be watching. When you're done playing, just pop back over in here, and we can wrap up at the end of your game. Thanks a lot, guys. So we're supposed to leave All now? Right, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll yeah. see you guys in a bit. Good luck. Good. good luck, guys, yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't want them to hear all of our super right. secret <laughs> tips and insights. That might make the game work. We, we are broadcasting live, and they could have it open in another window. <laughs> it could matter. Okay, so so first thing yeah. here, um, let's let's take a look at where they where they've decided to deploy these objectives. What do we think about how they they've laid these things out? 
Yeah. Definitely right sided heavy. But very heavy. Right, interesting point. There's one in the deployment zone that is back there, which is honestly for these kind of armies, almost a detriment because like it's it's <laughs> these are so such like a kind of aggressive armies, I feel like that no one really wants to keep a unit behind just to score it. So um we'll have to kind of wait and see how that plays out here, but I, I don't know if that was kind of intentional sort of get out of the way token or if someone has a plan behind that. Um, it seems a bit odd to me, at least when I look at it board. Yeah. All right. I feel like there's not it's really like... like a throwaway unit. You know, some armies, they run that one throwaway unit that you leave in the deployment zone to take that objective. But I don't really feel that way here. All right. So it looks like Mark yeah, won I mean, the roll. Go on. There, There's just a... 105 point minute armed swordsman seems to be up up that direction right now. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I do feel like on that flank, he's going to have some more important jobs for that swordsman to do, uh, but we'll see. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the snow foxes could have fallen to closest, I think, in, in both between both armies of, of what would be there. But like you said, I th I, I'd be shocked. The way that the games are played, I'd be shocked those men in arms don't move for, for six turns. But we'll see. Maybe maybe that's his master plan here. Maybe he's faking them out. You know, sometimes you want to keep your opponent guessing. So that's that's uh, the fact that we don't know. Maybe it's a good sign that maybe Mike doesn't know either, right? So, you know, <laughs> some of my games going on there. So it's uh, it's Mark with first turn. Yep. Aggressively yep. moving up the uh, Aloha regiments and Ur Aloha. I love it, man. Just slam them forward. It's the first thing you do, right? I, I always, uh, I always kind of agree. Play the flanks first. Um, sometimes, kind of. That's usually I think we spend the most time kind of figuring it out. Um, one thing I was going to comment on earlier was how heavily they kind of deploy they are. As far as armies are very compact, like they have not, you know, you can chop off basically at least a foot, almost a foot and a half on each side, and, and you're, you don't have much of a different battlefield here. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see if, if that does come into play. I'd say that, you know, the, the I think with the flyers, the Basilians are definitely trying to get around the flanks here. So that'd be my guess, at least, that Mark's trying to push that a little bit. And I think going first is a big deal when it comes to that, too. So, um, you know, that you basically turn up on your opponent, kind of like in chess, where you always want to go first, right? Like, this is the same deal sometimes in Kings of War, where getting that first move just means you're just that much closer to, to getting around your opponent. Yeah, I think... I think depending on the armies, of course, but it is an interesting, like, how you choose to go first or not. Um, sort of when I was learning, I always thought going second was great because at that end of turn six or turn seven, it feels so powerful to be able to get last move into objectives or into dominate circles. But then as I played more and more, like going first, having the ability to keep your opponent pushed back, dictate you know, where the battle is going to be fought is also super important. So I find myself probably like 50, 50 on going first or second, depending on what army I'm playing and the scenario. Yeah. I used to be one of those people that did agree to, I used to be like, Oh yeah, going second would be great. But especially now I find, especially in third, again, um, like if you want to play like against rays or something, like if you go second, that is a huge disadvantage right off the get go. Cause like trying to get those objectives on the other side. Yeah, I'll be honest. I pick first probably nine times out of ten, if I'm being very honest. <laughs> like, I, I pretty much always take first turn. Um, part of that is the fact that I think I play aggressive armies, so going first to me means that I'm I'm making you fight the battle of my terms a little bit more, right? I'm, I'm yeah. you know, I get, I get to push the pace where you want. Um, you know, again, both these armies look pretty aggressive to me, too, so I imagine, you know, they both would have done the same. I don't know. We'll kind of have to see afterwards, maybe, but... Um, yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty grindy game, right? So the the terrain over here towards the left side, you got both pieces of impassable terrain over there. Uh, so I think they they both kind of looked at the map and were like, I would rather not have to worry about anything on the other side of the impassable terrain. We're just going to put everything, including the objectives, on this side. Um, and these are two pretty grindy armies, right? Like Paladins are pretty grindy. Um, he's got the Alohi. Like, obviously, Basileans all have Iron Resolve. Um, but then Mike's got... Uh, you know, everything's got breath weapons. If they, they, they want to get in close and breathe on you and then get in there and grind you out, um, except for his faster elements like his frost fangs and things like that. I think this is going to be a pretty, going to be a pretty brutal match. So I would normally say, yeah, for the, the grindy side, but we're like he, um, Mark has taken a lot of defense for in that main battle line. The men at arm swordsmen and the two paladin foot guards that aren't defenders are all defense four. 
you know, 15, 17 or 13, 15. Um, oh, you're right. He did. There's stuff in that yeah. Northern Alliance that can crack that in one go um, and may, may never get a chance to, to grind. Um, he has so much of it and he's staying so compact that I think the, the goal there is to sure you can take off one of these units, but the, the crack back will be much worse for you. Um, yeah. It's just the thing I'm noticing is like that, that icy breath and the, the removal of that one inch of movement on any of those paladin, you know, foot guard or swordsman would actually take them back out of charge range. So he can do that, yep. that really annoying, painful move where you get just within charge range, icy breath them, and then they're back out of charge range because they, they move slower. Um, he can do it to the ogres as well because they're also just move six. Uh, icy breath is only 10. Oh, you're right. So, yeah, so, so that, if it was twelve, would be a lot better. But I mean, even to what Britain says there, I think that's that's that strategy. And the bolt throwers have it too, right? I mean, there's so many ways yep. to kind of get you know cheeky with it, right? So it, it's I, I'm I'm excited to see Mike kind of try it. I assume there's some kind of weird you know tricks in here. Um, Mike Zettelmeyer is obviously a very strong player. He comes out of the Mid Atlantic. Um, I know he did very well at the Masters this year, um, and I'm sure he's a very kind of solid player when it comes to those those little tactics and whatnot. So um, yeah. I'm curious to see if he really has those kind of tricks in store with his army. I would definitely would not be surprised to, to kind of see them come into play. So well, it's yeah, because he was playing Undead at the Masters, and I and I know a lot of people looked at his Masters list and kind of kind of scratched their heads and was like, it looks like he just sort of went down and took one of everything. Either either this is just a random assortment of units, or this guy's really good and has a really good idea of what tactics he's going to use and he's got a plan and all that and like having having played mike enough i i, I know that like he's got a plan and so even even this Nor northern alliance list you go through it and it's like a couple of this couple of this couple of this one of this one of this it seems like kind of the same sort of like survey of what's in the army kind of list so i i can only guess that he sat down and figured out exactly what he wants the roles for each of these units to be uh, and, and i'm really interested to see how he uses this army and he has a large shooting advantage. It's it's a lot of it is short range, um, but those there's a point. We'll see if we get into this or if it just bursts wide open and everyone comes steaming in. But there is this sort of period of uncertainty that can happen where you are dancing within range of each other and not wanting to commit. And during that time, it feels like Mike's army has the advantage, um, just because it has a few things that can can do work during that period. Um, then there's Samarchus and a priest to heal some of that back off, plus Iron Resolve. Mm -hmm. So how much of any of that shooting sticks is is questionable. But the whatever round the Icy Breath goes off, because I think it's something like 48 Icy Breath in the list, and if that's hitting Defense 4 targets or you know regiments of Aloha or something, um, that, that can do a whole lot of damage in, in one sort of turn. And take one of these smaller units off. Yeah. yeah. And thanks and thanks for reminding me that the the paladins had gone to the two-handed weapons and were down to defense 4. I'm I'm so used to seeing those things be, you know, defense 5 kind of tanky, healy back. Yeah. Up. It's it's an interesting list. Um there's a couple other spicy little options in there that you know the the two ogre palace guard captains, one with crystal pendant of retribution. <laughs> Like part yeah. of me is like, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> having the crystal pendant on the captain. I feel like it's a really expensive thing. And I love the crystal pendant on units that are with a big footprint. So like sometimes there's multiple units that kind of get held up by it. But I feel like with the captain, it's a little less so. But Right. And he's not really blitzing the captain out there. I guess he kind of is. But um I kind of expect that guy be, you know, front and center in the way, you know, blocking two to three units. That, that's, he hasn't done that yet so far, but we'll see. Um, these players are playing pretty fast, I'll say. I mean, we're kind of, as we're talking here, we're kind of down. Mike's almost done with his movement phase, right? So, I mean, just to kind of catch up real quick here. Um, Mike obviously went for the hill, grabbed that hill with his unit of, forgive me, they're not Bloods War now. They're called... Uh, Clansman. Clansman. Okay, that's Clansman. it. Yeah, so, yeah, there you go. So, um, so obviously taking a very uh, defensive position there. I think ready to play that game. Britain talking about that. That sort of all right. Walk into my danger zone here, right? Yeah, you, you I got this, this death ray bubble. I'm gonna start picking away with these bolt throwers, and you know, just waiting for you to kind of step in there. 
Um, now, the the I think the advantage goes a little bit to Mark, though, because the way it stands with the tokens is that he's definitely got the one in the back. He hasn't moved that unit that we talked about, so that unit's sitting there. They're chilling. So, and then he's got two in the middle, and he's, you know, it's kind of pushing up on that one on the right side. So, you know, if you look at the scenario play, I'd say Mark is definitely in the driver's seat of the scenario. It's up to Mike to really kind of make a play on that. So, he, he's going to have to rely on more than just this little kind of, you know, breath shooting or kind of, you know, Mark. And I know Mark's a pretty strong player, too. Um, so, I think, you know, I'm sure he's going to play the scenario smartly and not going to just kind of walk into yeah. his to Mike's stuff. So, yeah, yeah there's this. There's this line of battle that you can see almost forming where you trace a line between those three sort of right center um, objectives there that he's going to kind of form up on and and protect. And if he can hold two of those in the back one, it's a draw. And if he holds all three or or two in the back one and denies one of those, no one gets it, then that, that's a win for him. So pile everyone forward, get them into position quickly, and then I expect it to be very small sort of tactical moves after that, like ra race into position and then hold. Um, but we'll see. And then hope that to swing around and crush all of, because that's his entire army, it's in that tiny sort of footprint. And then he has some Alohi and an Ur Alohi kind of keeping the, the sweep around from um, Mike's army from coming around. So it's We'll see. It's just I worry that those those swordsmen and defense four paladin foot guard could just crumble, or they could stick around forever, like bastards. That's good. He, he he could also use that Urlohi to pop around and get rid of the bolt throwers if that's what he's planning on doing. If he's right. if he's really worried about him, and Mike doesn't really. Know. Well, I guess he could we flip a action. elemental around. And start them. Yeah, we got we got built in Urlohi punchers, but. Yeah. We'll see. It looks like he's already so, measuring too. Like um, Mike's already measuring like how far that Earl high can go, how far yeah. back he can he can get quite a ways back there already on the back line. So yeah. right, I was just about to call so the same thing. We Mike's talking... clearly looking at the the sights, right, and the movements, and and uh, yep. taking a long time to. I think he hasn't shot yet, right? So he's kind of really I guess, thinking about what to, to do here. Be, yeah. I'm curious that he's kind of taking this long to kind of figure things out. Yeah. Yep. Or the room locked up, one or the other. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, so we were talking before uh, before the broadcast started about uh, them playing pillage with an even number of objectives. Um, how does that? How how does because because the TOs dictated that they wanted it to be uh, pillage with six uh, objectives specifically. Um, going into it knowing that there's an even number of objectives, how does that change how you deploy the objectives? Knowing that there's that, that that there's a real possibility that you'll end up with a draw just because you both walk away with three. I mean, someone balls up and threw one into the back of a deployment area, which which makes it a lot a lot crazier. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yep, for sure. They, yeah. they they went hard on that one, which changed the whole dynamic of the battlefield. If it was just sort of three yeah. three ish on one side, three ish on the other, you can see a lot more static yeah. of a game. Um, Looks like looks like Mike has moved on to shooting now. Yeah. Well, I think also with the pillage tokens, sometimes like when you have that five or maybe seven, and you can kind of like, especially when you have some flyers or some more mobile units, you can throw that one off in the middle of nowhere where you're like, well, I'll be able to get there last game. But you can tell see these guys really put them all kind of in one area of the map besides the one that's in the deployment zone. Um, so, so did he shoot? He shot the... Sorry, the paladins. Yeah, so the paladins look like in the middle. We'll hit the blue star. I think you said to show they're frozen. So they're yeah, sure they've been slower. frozen. Um, yep. and it looks like the second shot at um, the same unit, it looks like. Looks like. So, yep. And he gets that of resolve and, and not a whole lot. And he pops Aegis even. So he says, all right. So he heals the wound. Still frozen, though, I guess, right? Still technically yep. Still frozen. frozen. So yep. interesting little dynamic there. Um, you definitely have to make them some good points with the tokens and stuff. Yes. I mean, when you look at the way that, you know, um, Mark, you could have saved been forced to play is kind of keep that unit back there to explore that point. Um, he's effectively down a hundred points, right? I mean, um, he has to kind of keep the unit there. They're not really going to make it a sizable impact on this game that they're kind of going on in the middle. So, 
you know, I, I always kind of like put my opponents in that position. You know, I don't know if Mike did that intentionally or not, or if they kind of worked out that way. But, you know, if my opponent has to spend a hundred point plus unit to sit that back the point zone, then I'm going to use that advantage to kind of push them in the middle where they're then weaker. So, um, so right now I think, yeah, I sort of, we'll, we'll see, but I sort of feel like they're playing a little dual duty right now. They're mm -hmm. also playing defense against the, the Tundra Wolves on the far right side, sort of, you're trying to prevent them yeah, from, the yeah, sneaking around the Ogre Palace Guard. Um, sure. So that's the other, I think that's their other sort of secondary role is like, hey, don't right. don't come back here. We'll exactly, wait right. for you. Yeah, they, exactly. They can at least do something, right? Even even if they're hindered or something. So they'll, they'll at least do something. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. So I think yeah, we've got to the top of turn two then. Yeah. Holy shit! Went to okay. turn two already. Okay. I love it. I love it. All right. Now I said anytime. It's ogre guard, ogre palace guard are no fucking joke. By the way, they really? hit really hard. So um, I'm surprised he gave them that. Yeah, exactly. I, I same here. I have to agree. Um, not sure because that's think he way. Did... Oh, go ahead. Do you think maybe he just didn't expect him to actually take that charge? I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, I see. I think that's you, Mike, giving us the arcs on those units, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it looks like the one Lord on Frostfang has got them, but the other unit does not, I think, right? No. Yeah. So, so that unit, yeah. So, if they, assuming that they put some serious hurting on the um, Thunderbolts, and, and that's kind of, you know, I'll be honest, I don't really see Thunderbolts taking regiments. So, let me let me kind of look at their stats before I kind of talk too much here. Yeah, but... I'm, I'm, I'm flipping through the book. <laughs> no, look at there. Where are we? I was like, how high their nerve yet? Well, the next time I say they got nerve 20, I'm like, oh, no, yeah, okay, he's fine. But no, he's only got nerve 15 on the unit. So, it's not yeah. not like they're very tough. Um, fence four. So, the Ogres are going to crush right through that unit, I, I would imagine. So, um, I, I kind of agree with Brindley. But I don't know if that was a mistake or if he's got some kind of devious plan here. Um, I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't mind sending ogres off to the far right of the battlefield or far left from from mark's side but like right. if they crush them in that turn they just spin and they're facing back in and you you gained right now there's the problem time. right it's it's yeah so i mean exactly i mean i i, I have to agree with you man i don't i don't know i, I have to assume that some kind of error on mike's part or, or either that or he's playing some kind of you know 3D chess game that we mere pets yeah. can't understand, right? So we'll yeah. wait and see which one <laughs> works out. But um, but I'm I'm a little scared for him. If I'm, I'm looking at this battle right now, and I see more as I'm saying that more charges coming in here. It looks like uh, hello, hi, hello, hi, hello, hi into the half elves. Yep, into the half berserkers. Berserkers. Okay, I love. They are it, wasting man. no time. Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. well, I think I think that's yeah. where we see too, right? That first turn advantage, getting to really like for like get in there first turn, like you getting in there first, getting those first mm -hmm. charges off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's he's like, you know, he says you want to push up even past a little bit past your deployment zone. I'm charging you, right? He says, yeah, you can't do shit. So, I, yeah. you know, those, those berserkers, they're 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 a good unit to charge, I think, because they, you know, you look at the the uh, foxes to the side, they don't really do a whole lot, even if even if you can ignore them, they're just not really that that scary yet. But those berserkers can actually do a little bit of damage. So I think knocking them out first with their low defense and low nerve, the, that's a good unit for Loki to kind of just take a good shot at and, and try to really crack. Um, he's gonna have to push up the rest of his army to really push it to to kind of press the advantage. So we'll kind yeah. of have to, um, you know, we'll have to see if he moves the rest of up. But I think you know, I, I love making these first charges. You know, that I'm all about them. So I think know, he's, yeah. I mean, it depends on the role, but um, yes. those those tundra wolves are are looking hurt. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. No, um, they're they're not uh, high enough to really take that kind of charge. I mean. They're only a 15, right? I think, right? Is that right? 13, 15, I think, from what I. Yeah, recall. we said 13. Yeah. The Tundra Wolves, 13, 15 yep. with a defense four. Yeah. But so... the, um, the Half Elf Berserkers serve... could live. Yeah, Very that was easy. a little sketchy. Yeah, that, yeah, the, the Berserkers might not die there, which, which is kind of fine, really, because what you're doing, you're block, clogging up this whole line here. Again, you, right. these Ice Elementals, they only have a range 10, right? So when you look to shoot, you, you can't, you know, if you get these. You can't move, right? The one, one's completely locked down. They can't even move at all. The one to the left can maybe try to push up and get an angle, but, you know, it, it's already got, with that Urlohi on the side already, I mean, this is, things are, are you know, kind of getting pressure on it. Um, I'm actually surprised they didn't push the Urlohi a little more. Um, I do understand that. I know that I supposed to have Shamble. Of course, I don't want to go crazy with it. But at the same time, I like to be kind of aggressive with it and just kind of push the pressure. Yeah. Um, uh, to me, it's a little passive, or at least from my point of view. I think I would have been a little bit more aggressive, being at least further down the board. Um, 
but but again, you know, it's one of those things that maybe he says, okay, you want to put your ISO monthlies up, then I'm going to go 20 forward and kind of pop up behind your line. So, um, you know, again, I, I do like Mark's position right now, and I think it's working well. So, yeah. I'm kind of wait to see. Those foxes are really fast. So the the Elohi jumping over the foxes means that the foxes are, are still in place to go and get in front of uh, the rest of Mark's infantry. So like, well, yeah, right, the, the right now Elohi they don't get, get the to. charge off. <laughs> right now, I don't need to, but I'm thinking about like next turn. Like, say those Alohi don't break those berserkers. They're they're fearless. They're 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 going to hit them back. Uh, and the foxes are fast enough that they can go get in the way of any other support coming. So I, I feel like I, I don't know if this is going to be one of those like premature alpha strikes that just kind of ends up bouncing off and not really doing all the damage that it that it wants to. Well, that's um, the uh, that's sort of the question. Like, if this is just, I think I can roll hot and I can take those those elves out of the equation sure like that that gets you something but that's sort of best case it's about what right. other positioning can mark do because he's clogged up the middle of his line and kind of annoyed the piss out of him probably so right. what what are what positional advantage are you gaining from that while this is happening and it could just right. be that every turn that he's mucking around killing suicide aloha is a turn that he's not moving up and taking objectives um but I would love to see something going on with the the Earl Ohi or someone else sort of saying pressing that advantage. Um, yeah, it's the, possible that to... his, his whole plan is just to keep them over there because he is sitting on you know those two objectives in the middle. He's got the one in the backfield, and if one of those or if if, if one or both of the uh, the ogre individual characters goes and gets the one on the right side uh, behind the other ogre's paler, ogre palace guard, then he's got four objectives and he just needs to sit there and live for the rest of the game. Yeah, but that's the thing yeah. he has to rest of the game we're only on top turn two right yeah yeah but like there's not a ton of i mean there's the foxes which are probably going to die there's the tundra wolves which are currently getting punched in the face by ogre palace guard once those are gone you you don't have a lot of fast mobile stuff that's going to be grabbing late game objectives on the side of my he just has to yeah kill a lot of stuff and take those central objectives and sure we'll see just the just like the frost fangs and the lord on frost fang uh, who's also not nimble no he is nimble the lord on frost fang is nimble so he can definitely do the job late game of popping yeah. on an objective but yeah he doesn't have a whole lot of options there yeah i mean not... like, if he just steamrolls the middle here then <laughs> like he's not as <laughs> worried Right. I don't see that okay. happening though, especially the way like this army is designed. I mean, I think one of the bigger issues with um, I call it an issue necessarily, but one of the one of the things that Mike might run into is um, there's a lot of terrain here, kind of around some of these points, and I'm sure I assume Mark kind of playing that intentionally. So, um, you know, the, if you look at what units have Strider, um, you know, have the Frostfang Cavalry, which which definitely you know are in a good spot and can take advantage of that. But and you have the Giant, you can do that. Um, but other than that. Um, most armies not really going to deal with this, the terrain very well. So I think like, especially you have like the clansmen. I mean, they're on the hill. That's fantastic. But in reality, like they're going to, what are they going to do really? Cause if they want to move into that wood, they're going to be hindered. They're going to be hitting on fives and that's just, you know, really, really kind of reduces their output they can do. And so I think, I think when you look at those kind of, um, you know, there's a scenario if, if Mark can kind of take a quick turn here with the over palace garden and, and neutralize it. I think to me after that the main threat is going to be this Frostfang Calvert. And if you can deal with them, I see the game, you know, tipping his scale as far as flavor, you know, and, and way to deal with stuff. So we'll kind of wait and see how that goes. So we're we're a little down on Mike at the moment, but we do have to remember he's a very Mike. solid player. He Oh, I'm sure he'll find a way out of this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Mike's a very strong player, like I said. It, it, and I, I agree with from Mike says earlier. He's got a game plan here. Like, this wasn't, you know, accidental. I, I just I hope not. I just I on, the, on the right here. So, I, yeah, I'm I don't sure know. Those, those, those Tundra Wolves look like it might have been an accidental misplacement. <laughs> too close. Maybe, you know. maybe. So there's uh, a, he, he got fourth in battle at Masters. Um, yeah. But yep. He also took he the got, last call to arms tournament. Yep. But at Masters... One. At Masters, he had the lowest attrition out of the top seven. So yeah. part Very of that tactical. was a list. He had a list that uh, relied on sort of drain life and, and heal from uh, Morgoth and a, what's oh. it called? A uh, lich. A lich, yeah. And would just lich sort of thing. let people grind up against his giant revenant hordes and, and take them off. Um, so part of that is list dependent, but it also from a single, to extrapolate from a single data point, which is entirely nonsense, but why not? Um, 
we're gonna jump we're gonna into say, combat now here too. It's someone who was doing yeah, just so. enough to win and not going overboard with the kills, and this might be you know setting up for another situation like that. We'll see. So so we got ten wounds onto the tundra wolf. Yep. And yeah. just like that, they're gone. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That takes care of it, yeah. Yeah, and, and he ooh. only did four wounds there in the middle against the half. Yep. So yeah, the, kind of the Loki in the middle pretty much bounced that off. Seems the like we, we didn't get that crazy hot roll in the middle, but right, kind of what we expected I mean, there on the right flank. That's absolutely yep. within the expected sort of the expected range, right? They're going to hit yeah. with six ish. Every, everything ish. Not to piss off Nick Williams, I'm not trying to say they should get exactly six. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> um, Six, six ish, and then you you get a one out of those. So like four, five, six wounds is or damage is kind of the expected. He got slightly on the low end, but whatever. Um, so yeah, yeah you can never be too, too too sure about how the UB dice will roll, though. They do have a tendency to roll improbable things far more often than you expect. Oh, At yeah. least anecdotally, like the distribution is kind of screwy. I, I don't trust. I don't trust uh, computer dice rollers. I, I know too many programmers to not <laughs> to, to try that yeah. clear, man. This 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 one is I don't know like I don't know who coded this thing, but it, it is out of control, man. I've seen it swing all over the place. So I've seen it swing like so hot where you're like, um, I need sixes, and you roll ten dice, and you get like seven sixes, and you're like, how? I just yeah. I know so many times when I've talked to programmers and said something like, so this is random, and they're like, eh, yeah. Eh. <laughs> Yeah, having having tried to do that, like actually actually true true randomness, like having a sufficient amount of entropy to really call it random is kind of a challenging problem, um, and I don't miss having to try to do it. Um, but uh, Zed, right. I think, t is is, is going to take his time here and and size up his options. Sure, um, yeah, as he should, because he, he, should. he probably did not expect to to lose those that that unit all, all the way over there on the right side. Although he really doesn't have any options other than to throw. Uh, the Lord on the Frostfang into the front of the ogres just to just to hold them up. Um, no, because otherwise he's got. I guess he's thing. he's. I mean, Lord of the Frostfang is a great unit. Don't get me wrong; it's fantastic. But I think dealing one on one with a a uh, horde of ogre palace card there sounds like a tall order, especially um, you know, sort of given the board state. Um, I don't know if you give us a, a range on those uh, the cavalry. There, yep. um, I'm assuming okay. they kind of have nothing. Yeah, yeah. So I assume they have that ogre there. You know, as, as I kind of expected earlier, there's the pendant captain, right, kind of moving up in the position, saying, "Hey, um, yep. feel free to charge me, right?" So yep. um, that's about the only charge they have. So yeah, um, you know, if and, they take and, that, and I wouldn't expect that that lord on Frostfang by himself to take out those ogre palace card. I just right. I I would expect him to get in their way and hold them for a turn, so the Frostfangs can turn and get him next time. But then like. That's all of Mike's speed and and heavy hitting all going to one unit way over the side until the middle of the game. Like that's really drawn him out of position. I mean, if it killed, like you look down Mark's list and the two things that are going to hurt you are Ogre Palace Guard and other Ogre Palace Guard. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I don't I don't yeah. love losing the Tundra Wolves, and this doesn't seem like all one grand strategy to trap one unit of things because you might end up also feeding them the Lord on Frostfang. Probably not, but yeah. it's possible. But if he gets them out and the Frostfang's back towards the center ish any time in the, the last two turns, like I don't hate it. You know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean I kind of agree with you. I think I think his play here is to turn those cavalry towards that Ogre Palace card again. But they're not super fast. He can throw the the Lord on Frostfang at him yeah. at least at least lock him down and then finish him off with the Frostfang Cavalry if he's playing it right. And then then the question is, can this nimble Ogre Palace Guard captain wedge himself in between that Frostfang charge on his Ogre Palace Guard with the crystal pendant? <laughs> right exactly yeah and that's right. that's a game you know I, I think only honestly that's a very hard thing to avoid too i mean the only way i can think of avoiding is to try to give him a flank which is has its own set of problems right i mean they're not exactly you know the most damaging you in the world but if you're giving flanks to ogre palace or captain i mean i'm sure he'll take that two yeah. seconds and not you know worry snow, about it how did those snow foxes see the ogre palace guard i think i think they were just touching the forest they were oh, okay they so it's like it's kind of yeah. hard to tell from an, up, like or, our so. Maybe I'm I'm misremembering their starting position, but they don't have to see the front of them. It's kind of there. They just they, trace that arc no, right to the left of that forest and hit the side of them. Oh, it's that corner. Yeah, it's a very good yeah. point. 
From the start of the position, they could have seen the back, yeah. Uh, hello. Yeah, they might have seen that. Yep. Hello, charge on. Taking it on. I love it, yeah. All right. So he's, 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 no he's ignoring our advice. So, so yeah, <laughs> dead wrong yet again. So, okay. So, so which should... it's, have we confirmed? Is that the pendant one? Can we click can it? Check. Yeah, yeah. Check. that's the pendant one. Yep. Ooh, that is a bait. That'd, that'd be funny if it wasn't, yeah. Yeah, that would be so funny. Yeah. But if sick. you hit the pendant, it blows up. You you can you, you can't reform, can you? You, you can, just yeah. You can. You, you can, can reform you just take you it forward. The things you can't exactly the things you can't do are go forward. They're D6. Because yeah. um, it's like there's a giant blast in your face, which makes sense. I just wasn't sure if you could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, no, I agree if that... you can't reform, then um Right. Can... Yeah. That would that would limit his position even more, which which but I think, you know, I think I think I like I don't hate it, the charging forward here. I'm not a huge fan of it to be honest, but I think maybe he thought the same thing you were just thinking Britain was, hey, this guy's gonna get my way regardless. He's gonna be a pain in the ass. I might as well just kill him now. I'm gonna eat a few wounds. Yeah, it was the same amount of wounds I take if I just give this guy a, a free charge of me anyways, right? So I might yeah. as well kill him. So, you know, not not a terrible thought process, you know, in general. And then he's also simultaneously locking down the palace guard. So he's at least saying, Hey, they're not yeah. gonna charge me. So, you know, it's, it's not a bad counterplay here. Um, I think the biggest issue right now is those, those <laughs> the regiment of Alohi just like in his face blocking down his isolamentals, the last yeah. thing he wants to deal with. So, uh, and I think Mike know. just just remembered that uh, those half elf berserkers have iron resolve because he just dropped one one wound off of them. Dropped oh, them do they really? Oh, I, yeah. I didn't know that myself. So uh, you're a cool. I didn't you're a cool little unit. Um, yeah. Him yeah. punching them in the yeah, face first also strip their uh, thunderous. Normally they hit pretty hard. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Fifteen yeah. attacks on the troop. Hitting on threes, they're they're a nifty little thing. So, throwing Definitely. throwing suicide aloha into the mix, sure. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Right, that's, yeah, why not? That's, yeah, that's like a suicidal throwaway unit against a suicidal throwaway unit. We'll see who wins. Um, right. Who wins Almost. the suicide mission? Basically, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's right. the thing that that doesn't cost him a whole lot because he wants to block Mike up here because he, he clearly, especially if he he kind of. You know, um, saw that he was going to charge the right side and assume things are going to go well for him. He said, "Kind of, hey, I got the advantage here. Um, let me kind of bog you up in the middle, slow you down. That way, my my units can flank you." And he's got two two kind of flanking threads, so to speak, with that ogre palace guard and one with the Erlohi. So, you know, Mike Mike is playing very defensive right now. You can just tell um, just to, to kind of deal with that. Now he's pushing up the ice elements into the wood. Uh, covering his flank very nicely there with those ice foxes and well going to be taking a pot shot with that icy breath. We're going to see this thing in action. And this is kind of the dream target, right? We talked about, hey, knock him out of charge range, you know, put some free damage on him and and just kind of go to town. They've already used their fragment, so, you know, he doesn't have to worry about that. Um, so there's something, there's a good little tricky thing going on, I think, with those ice elementals. They sidestep to the right, the bottom ones. Mm -hmm. Yep. We sidestep to the right and are now in position to be surged into the flank Ooh. potentially of the Alohi to sort of make sure that they go away. It's yeah, the, yep. that's a very necessary attack. Like you said, the, the Zerkers don't have Thunder's Charge, so yeah. I absolutely agree with you. Yeah, he, he did that very nicely done. Um, obviously, he's talking about Mike played on dead for a long time, no stranger to Surge or Surge yeah. again. so you know, definitely kind of play you expect from a, from a player like so that. Those are those are the really tricky things you see um, whenever you played someone or played as a surging army where people talk about it's, it's not just about sort of the obvious ones. It's, it's just that they have such good mobility and such good ability to react to whatever bad situation they're thrown in, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and these are, these are large infantry when you're on a 50 by 50 or 75 by 75, like square, it gets even worse where you can just sort of spin whatever direction you want and, find all kinds of crazy angles down a line. Um, but this is just one of those examples of he looks blocked for the charge pivot or uh, not pivots, but sidesteps. And suddenly there's like a searchable moment. Yep. Well, I expected yeah. this game to be swift and brutal, but I don't know that I expected it to be quite this swift and brutal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is, this is, I think by around turn five, there's not going to be a lot left on the table here. The way this, at least the way it's going so far. So, yeah. We'll kind of wait and see there. Um, there's a couple of things that are very interesting about the MVP list unit back there in the yeah. corner. Only, only guy left standing. Exactly, exactly. And and I mean, help push these guys forward to this point, right? Like I'm, I'm a fan of like, you know, you can always back them up three turns if you decide that they're out of position on turn three. Like, I'm, I'm a fan of like pushing these guys forward and kind of just seeing what happens, right? If they need to charge those frostman cavalry in the flank, then hell, they do it, right? They might, they might win to the game. We never know. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a fun little. Like I've had it happen before intentionally and unintentionally 
where you're like, hey, this unit doesn't want to just stand here and take this objective and they move a couple times. And then the game situation that would have made them useful doesn't happen and they just back up again. But the thing is you had that right. option. You had exactly. that ability to exploit an opportunity or you scared someone away from a move or you denied space or whatever. And then sure, you move forward, backed up, being stupid. You could have just stood there the whole time, but you you have that ability. So you can come, as long as you're not putting yourself into increased danger or too much danger, right. you can get back to it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's that's something that I think is, is very crucial to understand when it comes to these lower point units, especially that have like multiple roles. You know, I I, uh, I recently wrote a uh, dwarf army review article on Dash Twenty Eight or Shameless Plug to go check it out. But on there, one of the things I think is very important is, is units like sharpshooters, which are sort of a hundred point little shooter unit that score. Um, you know, I've had very successful games where they do they like kind of shoot for two turns. My opponent kind of thinks, oh, well, haha, I'm just going to move out of the way. You can't shoot me anymore. And I just run them down the board for three turns or four turns, and they end up capturing a you know objective or they get that corner into control, whatever whatever they do, and they end up scoring a big point that the opponent was not expecting. So, you know, and that that's a very viable use of that unit. So it's, it's you know, it, it's smart to play units in a way that can play multiple roles and kind of, you know, looking to score multiple points, especially in these objective games. And that really, I think that makes a big difference in the end. I think Alex is trying to bring back PTSD from losing. Oh, yeah. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other, the other sort of interesting thing for anyone tuning in that's kind of learning Kings of War, there's a couple just small uses of chaff here that are pretty normal, but they're good illustrations at the same time. Um, one is sort of capping and blocking off that really dangerous unit. He's not expecting to do anything with those uh, foxes other than get in the way and protect his frost fangs who have committed forward. Um, but you just sort of have a guaranteed, like you've capped them off. That side of his line is not going to get to you. You're safe over there for this turn. Um, and then the other one is just protecting his flank from the the flyers here, where he's turned them sideways so that there's no way to land and hit this legal flank that you're presenting to them. Um, so it's just two like small but sort of important bits of of chaff game going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really yeah. like to play with the snow foxes to cover up that flank. Yeah, it's it's definitely necessary for sure, and especially to push the face. Um, my only concern with it, and I'll, I'll just kind of say this now, is that what what if I'm you know, if I'm Mark, and they say you know what, yeah, I'm gonna charge them, you know, I'll just kill them, and then what, right? Like like what's the next play from from Mike? So, you know, it's 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 there's not really units behind them. There's not really units to the side. Yeah, he can he can surge the elemental, so he can pivot and turn surge them into their low heat, but that's not really a good play either because he's still got a such a threat coming from the front side. So. Um, while it's a good sort of temporary solution, I think um, to me it kind of, um, you know, I, I, I worry a bit about Bark's ability to just kind of push the pressure anyways and just kind of yeah. go heavy. So we'll see how Mike's, Mike can handle it. Mike's spending a lot of his resources in order to do simple sort of things, right? Like yes. picking up a picking up an ogre captain with the with the pendant. He's spending resources to do it. He's spending resources just to sort of protect. The ice elementals getting across the board um and it, it might be worth it i i agree that from the sort of meta the larger zoomed out like battlefield perspective i don't know if that's the best use of those foxes I'm, i and i'm not saying that in a negative way i like literally don't know i'm just saying it's a it's a good example of how you block a flank Definitely, definitely is, and and, and, and and I think it enabled his element to get in range to shoot, which we're now seeing right here. They put four wounds on that unit, so um, not a bad he shot. Put two wounds on the uh, on the Lohi here with the uh, giant, which also freezes them, and then the ice elementals hit the uh, thousand foot guard there for four wounds, and also freezing them. Cool. But that Ur, the Ur Alohi, let's see, will would an Ur Alohi? I mean, dash fifteen, defense five from. Right. Um, Ice elementals just hitting yeah. normally. I, so, I don't know so, if they take them out. No, not yeah, a chance. So, yeah. It's here's an interesting. Injured. Here's an interesting thing that, that Mike's doing. He, he he actually backed his berserkers up out of combat so that he could shoot these Elohi with the bolt thrower and then surge his ice elementals into their flank. Just for sure. extra damage. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He just wants to be safe, right? He's just seal the deal. I don't know if I would have done that necessarily. I would have probably shot at other stuff. Um, maybe the same unit with four wins in the back, but you know, that's fine too. Um, I think I'm probably pers personally, I think I feel I'm like Alex the is like low key, just like throwing shade. No, no, not at all. Just saying, I, 
I, I, uh, I guess, especially because he had that breath too, right? He looks like he did breath on their. I mean, it's only, yeah, I remember, it's only an Alohi regiment, right? Their, their nerve is about, what, 14, I want to say? So maybe 15. Let me see. Alohi reg? Dash 14. Yeah, dash 14. So, I mean, yeah, you got, I mean, you're hitting on the side with 18 attacks. You have crushing one, I think, on yep. the elementals. Yep. Yeah. So, and I there's, mean, there's a surge into the flank that we were yep, expecting. There's a surge, yep. So, how many ones do you have on there before the with all the shooting on them? Uh, they're, they're up to five. Five, okay, cool. Because he shot with the, with the, shot with the elementals the and the elementals. Elements. Yep, right. that's one and of the benefits of having a breathing yeah. attack on a Shamlin unit is that you can breathe, then surge into combat. Very cool stuff. It's um, the dream. Exactly, exactly. Those things that Dream usually like you, you, you theorize it, you write it down your list, you kind of laugh to yourself, you're like, haha, that's gonna be amazing. You never expect to actually do it, and, and here he is, Mike's doing it on turn two. So, yeah, right. that that's, that's cool. like I have a very clear memory of first reading the like as a dwarf player, first reading, like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I can take the I can take the breath 10 magic item. And then I can surge into them. And then you do the math on it. And you're like, congrats, you did one extra wound. <laughs> right. Good. Right. Buy brutal for 10 points, right? So you're still like, time, good, yeah. good yeah, job. Yeah. Uh, but it still <laughs> feels so good to it's be like, cool, I though, yeah. you. And Absolutely. now I'm like, so clever. Absolutely. Well, it's cool to like see things like that actually happen, right? When you like you plan them and you're like, one day it's going to happen. And, and when it actually does, you know, you feel feel good about it. Um, as I say, that's your dice rolling. Sorry. Um, so that's that's gonna be the elementals in the flank, I believe. Yep. Yeah, that was and he took them off. Gotcha. So I did a cool uh what was that? Uh seven wounds, I think. Thirteen damage. No, seven damage. Yeah. Five seven. My, only other, seven. my only other sort of question was, and this is from their final position in I, I don't know. Um did if they double charged, if the, the elves stayed in and the, they charge from the flank. Would he be able to reposition his elementals sort of straightforward like that in the right way, or would he have been pinched on what way he could face by the the uh, the, the elves? Yeah, it's probably not because the elves the elves would have been up much closer. Yeah, yeah probably been a little pinched, right? Like no. that's another thing when you when you're in that hurry to like double charge and put all the attacks in you have to remember what the restrictions on their reform is going to be after after that combat finishes the way you want it to so here come the frost fangs beating up on the ogre with the pendant oh god i want them to not kill him so bad <laughs> just oh my god 10 wounds it's a 10 plus a seven plus seven it's definitely enough battle to kill that's one. that's right on it yeah 15 17. <laughs> so here comes the pendant uh, retribution. Yikes. Five, seven hit, eight hit, sorry. Um, and I think it's Pierce three, if I'm not mistaken. So that is going to be seven That's wounds. Be seven wounds, yeah. Quite painful hit, honestly. Um, well played from Mark's part, you know. It's one of the things, actually, you know, or, or you laugh at or I laugh at. I'm like, what's this guy doing? Put a pendant on his captain. Absolutely massive amount of damage to just put on that Frostwing Calvary. They're they're in serious danger right now of, of really getting hit and killed. So um, yeah. Yeah, that did work out well for him. So yeah, absolutely. yeah, they are they are they are fifteen Can seventeen. So right now they're on right now. A, right, right now anything that does one wound to them only needs a nine to pick them up off the table. And um, Mike doesn't really have any way to heal them. I don't think in his list. Yeah, they're yeah, fifteen not. seventeen. Right? Yeah, that's not. Yeah. Right. The Frostfang, you know, they do a lot of things great. Um, taking multiple punches is not one of them. So, you know, no. they, they got a first big punch here. I think the next one's li very likely to give him a knockout. So, you know, we'll, uh, you know, he's done a good job, obviously, at least knocking out, locking up the palace guard from doing it. So, you know, if he, you know, so in a way, they are kind of safe right now, right? There's not really a lot that can threaten him. So, Ogre Captain. Ogre Second Captain. Ogre Captain right. coming in for revenge. Coming yep. in exactly with the hindered charge in the front. I mean, again, yep. I, I I like the play from Mike. You know, he kind of assumed maybe a big hit from this thing and said, "Okay, I want to make sure you can't just finish me off." So um, it's like four wounds yeah. on the ogre palace guard over here from the lord on Frostfang. Okay, that is that that doesn't seem like enough to break the walls, to break the ranks of Mordor. Right, there. right. right. <laughs> Looks like he, I think he did five, and then they got the one back with iron resolve. Yeah, I mean that's a it's a it's a tough match. I mean, and I think he's tough enough to take a punch back, right? So he's not he's not in immediate danger, but um, he's gonna start to roll. He's gonna roll a little bit more hot dice to kind of win that battle there. I think um, it's one that yeah, the Lord on Frostfang is also fifteen seventeen, and he's got hand sanguinary scripture. 
Um, yeah, so we he'll, talked, he'll hang up for a turn. We talked about it earlier where we we sort of assumed that this Frostfang was going to go over there and he was going to tie him up. And we, we sort of assumed that the Frostfang cavalry would be kind of coming in as a pain train behind him. But instead, it looks like he's just hoping that those palace guard don't get back into this fight. That by the time they would be, everything over on that flank is is out of range. And sure, they get to go stand on that objective, which I guess is good. Killing two units and, and an objective is a solid output from them. But yep, absolutely, it, yeah. I mean, he's kind yeah. of just trying to leave them leave them behind and fight the rest of the battle to the left, and the palace guard just get to watch. For sure, yeah. I'm I'm uh, I'm a little surprised. Um, oh, as I, I say, I'm gonna be proven wrong here. <laughs> Sam, a little, a little surprised. Nope. Mike didn't push up further on his um, clansman here, but it looks like Mark found a sneaky charge there that we didn't catch. Um, the paladin coming in over the wall through the wood, you know, whatever yeah. nursery rhyme you want to use there. They came from downtown to get in that charge. Yeah. Um, Oof, yeah, that's this, that's a that's gonna be a very dicey comment for Mike. I'm I'm uh, yeah. curious to see how that goes. I mean, I love I love yeah, Mark's just slamming it, no hesitation, right? He sees it, he says, "I want it." So, you no, know, yeah. the double hinder charge. Normally, normally I would expect them to bounce off. But those guys already have seven wounds on them. He doesn't need to do a whole lot, right? Um, and I, mean, I don't I don't know if they're inspired as far as they are from. They are out of six from the Lord. So I don't think that those frost fangs are currently inspired, unless he's very inspired. Yeah, she is very inspiring. So he is very inspiring. Okay, so they're yeah, fine. exactly right. So there you go. Right? I mean, one of the things that's cool about well, this, you know, fine. battle is that right, right. So I mean, these armies that Northern <laughs> Alliance is not a very popular army in the sense that you know, there's not a lot of armies out there yet for these. I'm sure that they're they'll just see more. They're essential. coming. So exactly, exactly. I know, we, I know people we, are working on them. So we, uh, we get out of quarantine, there's going to be like 50 more oh, yeah. Northern Alliance armies. I can't wait. I think it's fantastic. But this is a cool showcase here for a lot of these units. And, and you know, Lord of the Frost, I think, is definitely one of them. So we'll kind of have to right. wait and see how here he comes really the, Here comes the Urlohi into the there bolt is. thrower, like we so suspect that he might be, do. Yep, exactly. I'll have to just kind of pick yeah. up a bolt thrower here. Um, pick up a bolt thrower. Well, because Mike moved the giant up too far for him to be able to see it in the flank. And he couldn't send it into the front of Snow Foxes. But, like, so what? Right. I would have said sure, but I mean, I, I get why the the bolt thrower, you know, is, is something that you don't want to sit. And then killing this and pivoting, he's gonna have a nice targets for the next turn to, to kind of get some juicy rear charges, right? So yeah, I mean, it's a free if if he does what he should and and kills the bolt thrower, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a it's this weird sort of thing where it's like a free reform. <laughs> you you yeah, get to exactly. buy almost your max range in this situation or your max range. But instead of being restricted to that 90 degree pivot that would bring half the battlefield into view, they get to sort of use this bolt thrower as a as a free reform if they take them off. Um, and then there's the low, there is the po possibility that it fluffs the nerve roll or whatever, and it's just sort of stuck there fighting. Um, but that's not the end of the world. So. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, even even if you don't kill it, you're still looking at some some stuff there from the arcs. It looks like, and and you have. You're still flying all that stuff. So yeah, I'd say. I mean, I don't know. I think that I think, honestly think that's a bit of a mistake on Mike's part to let him get that charge in. Um, I mean, part of it is the fact that it's first turn. The guy's kind of flinging. I mean, I always say I, I do like where the giant's looking at right now. Um, his his frost yeah. giant. Um, I forget his name again. Sorry, it's uh, Hrim. I think yeah. So Hrim is actually. I, I really like the way he's pushing him aggressively, and I think he's really in, in a good position to kind of do a lot of good damage here. So. I'm excited to see that happen. Um, you know, you don't want to keep your giant back just just to wait five turns to hold back Erlohi, but at the same time, I really like where where he's going with that. But at the same time, you don't want that Erlohi in your backfield. So it's a tough balancing act here. What's great about yeah, that giant position is it can like what there's a whole lot happening on on our right, uh, Mark's Mark's left flank, and those units are kind of frozen there, not wanting to give up flanks to that giant um and it can kind of <laughs> it's just like in such a good position with strider to to come out of those woods and put some hurt on a flank um so yeah you can see here he's sort of reacting to it possibly yeah. backing up or or doing something to have to deal with it he, he's aggressively pushed that piece into a position that reshapes the sort of options that are in the center for mark um but we'll see We'll see what the regiment of Aloha do. Like, yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, he, he could just throw it, throw it in the front of the giant, but 
He decided no. He decided I'm gonna sit here, make you charge me. Right? I don't know why, but I mean, it's it's fair. I mean, maybe he's helping the giant whiffs. Unless he's gonna throw that that Alohi regiment into the front of the giant to keep him there for a turn. But if he's gonna do that, he should probably push the probably push his center up. I don't know. I mean, he's sitting on an objective. He doesn't really need to go anywhere. Mike's got to come to him in the middle. Yeah. So what's, well, I think also they're frozen, right? So they can't go back that far either, right? Or forward that right. far. Right. Right. They're they're minus I think one. that's what they were saying. Like he's frozen, so he can only go so far. So what's yeah. interesting? What you were saying about getting to see sort of Northern Alliance here, um, getting to see sort of a different Basilia build than than we were used to, especially from Second Edition. I think some of that is really the advantage around playing on Universal Battle. Um, that. I mean, the, the the friction to try or create a new army is much, much lower than the, the sort of standard Kings of War. I mean, it, it takes me a year and a half to finish an army. So uh, <laughs> the the ability to just sort of spin up a new army half an hour before a game and, and give it a try is, is a huge, huge advantage for Universal Battle. You don't need to own them. You don't need to assemble them. You don't need to paint them. You're not worried about a theme. Um, and while some of that, like those are all the things I sort of love about miniature gaming in the long term. In the short term, as a uh, an additive, you know, I wouldn't want to play Universal Battle as my only expression of Kings of War, but playing it in addition to normal Kings of War that that's a great benefit of it. You can try out all kinds of new stuff. Yeah, I agree. It's a good supplement to the game and, and to try things out. And I think I think uh, this term has really embraced that too. If you look at the way they set it up, right? They say you kind of hey, your opponents agree to the amount of points. You play whatever army you want every round. It's not you're not locked into a certain army or build or whatever. Yeah. Right? So mm-hmm. you know it's 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 embraced what I think UB does well in a tournament format, which is let the opponents you know try what they want and have fun and, and you know kind of keeps you motivated to keep playing and like oh I want to try this. this yeah, I'll see if it works, right? And and you're like, oh, it did terrible, or oh, it worked perfectly. Like that's cool. Let's explore that further, right? So, you know, I, I've played plenty of UB in the past, and I think that you know it's a good, it's a good way to test things out. It's, it's very precise too. I mean, you kind of see the way it plays. It, it's funny the way it plays. It's almost too precise, or like so precise. Like sometimes I sometimes find myself doing maneuvers. I'm like, there's no way I could do this in a real game, because it's like the accurate, the angles are so accurate that like, like that that would never happen. Like I would just never be able to do that. But you know, there's a cool way to play the game in, in that environment. That it, it's like. What could I do if I had, you know, math and computers doing angles for me, right? So, so the right is fun. The interesting part of it, and we'll see as this tournament goes on, and we we look at the round by round, and we look who's sort of floating towards the top of this massive field, um, be, because it's there's no soft scores. You don't need to own these armies. Um, it it could fit into that sort of race to the bottom filth fest that a lot of kind of low army friction, no soft score type environments can do. Where when you look at um, sort of magic or you look at uh, computer computer games or video games where it's like there's no stigma attached to just picking the most powerful, brutal and broken combos and mashing them against each other. And it'll be seen, we'll see if this goes that way. Like right now, these are kind of balanced, fun lists. And a lot of people are messing around and like, telling the other person what army to take and they're kind of embracing the fun of it. And, but I'm sure there's some people out there embracing the filth of it and we'll see how much that, that goes into the field. Um, I think there's also that thing though, but if you embrace the filth, it doesn't stop your opponent from embracing it too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I and can that's bring the, the dirtiest the thing, and Alex can look at my list and go, ha, 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 no, also I'm terrible, so Alex would beat me anyways. But <laughs> he could just bring whatever else he wants to, right? Like, there's no yeah. stopping it. And that's that's what I mean by sort of that, like, everything is broken, so nothing is broken environment. And, like, I right. appreciate that sometimes, but that's not what I want to spend my, my Kings of War life doing all the time. So it'll just be interesting to see whether the kind of cultural norms of Kings of War are upkept versus uh, the low army friction. But I'm going to stop talking about that nonsense because we got spicy moves going on. Like, ooh, something spicy. Yeah, Mark Mark just noticed that he had a flank charge with his Urologi regiment on those ice elementals. Even though they were frozen, they were still within 18 inches. Um, and the way Mike positioned them and left the elves back when he withdrew them meant that the, the flank was just barely open. Okay, that finicky move, he had the space to turn straight in it. 
kind of hurt him a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with the woods, you I mean, the, you're talking about line of sight, just barely saw them around the wood. And I guess um, he had the, the movement looks like just by an inch to get it. So, I mean, yeah, hats off. It's one of those things that you, you don't see. And honestly, you're not even, you know, I don't, I don't care if you're playing on UB, you're playing on a battletop. You know, it's hard to see those kind of weird angles. I'll you know, a giant blocking, you know, half their vision. But that other half, you know, that other it only it takes a, not even a half, it takes less than that. It takes a sliver to get the line of sight you need to kind of get that charge in. So. And that's. Yep. That's what's so mentally taxing about playing against flyers, multiple flyers, is that you you have this incredible range and they can fit in all over the place and you're worried about every unit in your line um, not giving them something and that one you forget to check or that, that reform where you're worried about the units in front of you and you forgot about it, suddenly out of nowhere they just pounce. And that's why those heavy flyer list can be so, so difficult and just mentally Definitely. destructive to, to play against. Right. It really, it really does take a combination of flyers to, to kind of, you know, exploit that. There's one flyer. It's like you can control it. You can lock him down. You can, you know, you can keep track of him, keep tabs on him, right? You're like, okay, I, I see him there. I see what he's trying to do. But, you know, you get the three, you get the four flyers. You're going to struggle a little bit. And I think that's, that's a very good point. I think that's kind of what happened here. Um, you know, and even if they don't kill the Isomas, which I don't think they will necessarily, right? It's not, they're not going to necessarily come in and just one shot that unit. But, um, you know, they're still going to put a ton of wounds on it. Um, you talked about how, you know, he's playing, I'm going to win the grind game, right? I want to get the wounds in where I can. So, um, yep. you know, I don't, I don't I don't mind the move at all. I think you, you take that charge every time. You know, even if they die, if they don't kill it and they die next turn, still very worthy charge. You still got stuff all, you know, still got flyers in the backfield. You still got so many things going for this game. You know, the more you take, uh, the more chances he's going to have things go well. And if you do kill a unit, then you're in a fantastic place, right? So, yeah. you know. And, and he's still holding up. He's still completely holding up Mike's middle by by throwing those Alohi in there. Because, you know, whether they do anything or not, now Mike has to use his middle to deal with them next turn again. And he's not pushing up and getting those other two objectives further up the field that he really needs to take away from Mark. And uh, the tough thing is if he doesn't heal those off, um, you know, uh, Paladin foot guard are not scary on the offense, but right. if you are already stuck with a few wounds on you and they get that unhindered two hand, uh, two handed weapon. So crushing strength one charge on you. It's it's they can finish a unit. They're not going to, they're not going to one shot a unit, but they can finish one. Um, that last like end of it clean up at the end of the round kind of thing. Yeah. It's so like Mark is doing some healing now. He flew Samacris over to do radiance of life on those, uh, over palace guard and was doing some heal. Yeah, I mean, Sarah Chris is doing a lot of healing here, um, and she's in an interesting position, too. I think um, I would have thought he's stuck by the Paladins to heal him a little more, but that that's, this is, I, I don't know, kind of, I think he's trying to come over and help those ogres, right? It's a palace guard. Yep. Yeah. Sarah Chris? Yeah, so he's he's maybe decided, hey, he did that mental math in his head, say, hey, this is, this is like a tough grind battle I might lose, so... You know, let me get Sam and Chris over here ASAP to, to kind of help my Ogre Palace card and make sure they win the battle. That's what I see when I see that. So he's not taking any chances with that that sort of... Plan. Yeah, I mean, it's it's insurance against a hot roll with yep. a little, little... It's also just like, it's a solid position to be in for her breath to, to start going after stuff on that side. Um, for sure. She can get yeah, moving on the melee are, here through the roof now, right? She can heal, she can breath, she's inspiring everything that's over there, right? She, she's in position to kind of do all those things. And, and, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, that's why people love Samarka so much, right? You know, you look at, at the Basilian Army list, and, and I know it's kind of a hot-button topic right now to talk about Phoenixes versus Samarka, but, you know, this is where she's, she's kind of doing a thing that a Phoenix couldn't do, which is kind of get over there, inspire, and kind of, yeah. you know, do do Samarka things, right? So, you know. Well, it's the it's the deceptively annoying power of Basilia where they have these multi-use. You know, Samarka is just flying around the entire game. You're not going to devote a bunch of resources to killing it. But it's going to heal, it's going to inspire, and it's going to do annoying breath or fireballs or whatever the, the attack is over and over. And at the end of the game, you're like, at the beginning, I wasn't worried about Samarkas. And at the end, you're like, Samarkas did so much to me. <laughs> right, right. So it's, every each turn, you think it's minimal impact. After well, six guys, turns of minimal impact, it's a huge impact, there, right? There's Snake Eyes. We just got the was. Snake Eyes. Oh, the my gosh. Right into the Snow Foxes. He did 10 damage and rolled Snake Eyes. Woo! That'll do. Yeah, that, that, that is, is going to hold that up 
Oof. That That's gonna hold him up really bad. I mean, I I would love to see that double one on the frost fang. I was gonna say, if I'm Mark, I'm thinking, okay, I got it out of the way. I didn't roll it on the frost fang, so I actually be quite happy to see that right now and just saying, let's just move on with our lives here, right? So yeah, um, I saw the I saw the double one, and I thought it was either the the Lord on Frost Fang or the Frost Fang Cav, and I was like, oh, oh, it's the it's the foxes. Okay, that's right. Interesting. That's gonna be eleven wounds on the. Oh, not only that, but a hot roll coming off of there. And I think the, the Lord on Frost yep. just, just got yep. yeah absolutely demolished by those out. Ogre Palace guard. That that is that is a very hot roll. Um, a lot of damage coming out. I mean, that's oof, man. That that's not what Mike wants at this point in the game. You know, he wanted to kind of you know get get some defenses going there. I mean, in a way, it's 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 you know maybe he's thinking now. Okay, I'm glad Mark committed to Samarcus to the fight that got so one sided. Oh, but forward. Um, going forward five, wow. Yeah, that's very. He says, yeah, he wants to get in the action right away, right? I mean, he's they're on the objective now. There's co completely consolidated. I think that Ogre Palace unit has killed two units. You know, very. You know, done a lot of work so far, and they're they're you know no worse for the wear for. It. They're ready to take it in charge and do more damage. So they're, they're one yeah. of the best large infantry in the game. Absolutely, they, absolutely. I mean, I know they have um, exactly the stats you want for them. Nothing wasted. They do. They do. It's just like. The right amount of crushing, the right amount of attacks, the right uh, defense, the iron resolve to just keep them a little bit in that fight. They're just like no, no bull. Just couldn't all. agree more. Absolutely, they're they're top tier unit. I mean, um, and the only thing I was going to comment was was um, if you looked at Dash Twenty Eight's recent Basilian Army review, we had articles ranked with the Basilian Army tier. <laughs> Right, and so uh, yeah, shameless uh, plug there. That's gonna um, be it's gonna be twelve wounds turn. on these. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, here. Sorry, I won't talk they about this one here. Trouble. Yeah, so, five twice. They're yeah. on a five twice. That sounds right. I see it once. Yeah, just just once. Oh, just the once. Oh, yeah, because right. the Lord's dead. The oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's an important, that's... another important little little tip for new players. Uh, yeah. You you as the acting player get to pick the order of fights. And he picked yeah. the chance to kill the inspiring mm -hmm. source first before doing the unit that would be inspired. So, yeah. absolutely, it's one of the mistakes that like I feel like I still make sometimes, and I'm like, yeah, I really shouldn't be doing that. But yeah, the order of combats absolutely can matter, and and here's a classic example of it, right? Not not saying he would have failed his next test necessarily, but you know, why why take it when you don't have to, right? So you know. Um, again, things looking really, really good for Mark right here. Just, just you know, demolishing the flank and, and kind of looking in a really good spot to kind of take advantage of that. See a pivot coming in here from these paladins and just kind of, you know, really just locking down this this side here. Um, yeah, the, the frost fangs going, unlocking the palace guard to face the middle and sort of control the charge down off the hill that these uh clansmen want to do right like they want to come down off that hill and smash something and yep. the fact that yep. what they smash they're going to get uh, exactly a guard. <laughs> exactly uh, best case scenario they're going to kill a unit of paladins and then just deal with ogres on both sides right so it's it's just not a good situation for them at all so yeah, Mike. Yeah, Mike. And, and now like all of Mike's unit strength is now sitting over here in the middle on just two objectives. Um, mm -hmm. whereas like Mark is sitting on four of them without having to do anything else for the rest of the game. That's only bottom of turn three. For sure. Yeah. Really, I mean I think it's a really bad yeah. spot. Absolutely. I mean, I think Mike's definitely gotta put some, put the pressure on now, right? Gotta gotta um go a little hard here. I, I would, if I would say if I was Mike right now, I'd be looking to Definitely got the giant into combat, right? Um, probably the Isomontals too. I don't know if they're within range or not. I don't know if you can give us a range on that, Mike, to see what the Isomontals oh, options the ice have. Um, this one or this one? This I one. meant the left one, yeah. So uh, know, as I'm saying that, I'm kind of... Um, yep, so... Yeah, so they have range 10, I think, right? Is that right? Or are they speed, speed 5 or speed 6? Uh, I saw another right. speed six. Oh, no, speed six. Okay, so they have twelve. So they do have some options. So I, I like the idea here of kind of you know getting aggressive, you know, play playing the game. Um, the biggest downside is that they're not a pathfinder, I don't believe. So they sit in the woods like that is going to hinder them coming out of the woods. So 
Um, I think they'd really have to kind of double up with the Frost Giant to kind of smash a unit, which, again, to me, that's kind of what I'd be looking to do right now. I'd be looking to kind of kind of push through and go through that. As I'm talking, I see um, they kind of forgot to cut Frostbolt combat, so um, I think he killed the Bolt Thrower, pivoted yep. his, his Erlo Heat to look at the rear. Mike jumps in the right into combat right away, um, no hesitation. Yep. And, and he, he did the smart thing there, moving his Thane up to keep his clansmen yes. from having to be hindered in the woods. Classic sneaky move, right? That's that's a, one of those tricks that you, if you're a new player, you can pay very close attention to, right? So um, the way that the woods are placed, um, the clansman would have charged, hindered into the unit. But if he puts his character in a way where the the clansmen are then forced to go around the character just just due to necessity, right? They, that's the only way they can connect with the charge. They've avoided the woods, so it's kind of that sneaky play where you can kind of keep that TC. He wants to keep that TC he's getting, and he also avoid getting hindered. So, um, very very crucial move, I think, to getting getting the damage in that he needs. I mean, I think with yeah, that, he has a, he has a good chance of really killing the unit with, with getting hindered and losing that thunder charge. You know, makes it much much harder to do that. So, um, again, very heads up play from from Mike Zettelmeyer to kind of get and that. That's, yep. Yeah, that's another example of that sort of uh really high quality of play um yep you might be in a bad situation but you know the micro moves that will give you the best advantages to get out of it um and placing characters so that they control charge paths placing units so that they prevent you from sliding or matching up all the way with an enemy unit and that kind of stuff is is like that that play um for sure, it, for sure. Those incredibly useful little pieces with individuals that people miss sometimes. Um, and hopefully, I mean, it looks like they're still kind of trying to like, yeah, work yeah. Out maybe hitting a thing will quite right. I, I don't know if, uh, I think, I think when you finish closing, you know, quote unquote, closing the door as, as you, you know, now it's just called pick up in place. I think so as you picked up in place, I think it tipped into the woods and maybe decided that wasn't the, the right play, but um, we'll kind of wait and see what he ends up doing. Um, I think I think there is ultimately here an opportunity to get the charge he wants with it, mm -hmm. and it's actually this, yeah. this is where he's taking advantage of Snake Eyes too, right? So that Snake Eyes, that ogre unit, Palace Guard unit is stuck, you know, fighting the foxes. So if he can he can kill this unit, if he can kill them in one turn, he can at least turn to the right and at least get a chance to fight those Palace Guards. Say, hey, you know, I can yeah. I, my back's covered for one more turn, right? That that might be all or, it takes, to, right, to get to get myself in, you know. Protected yeah, here. we still have a nimble yeah. ogre captain. That yes. I think I think can do True. can do a part here to get the way, and we have ultimately Sam Marcus. I I think I don't think those clansmen are going to get the the opportunity to charge those palace guard. <laughs> yeah, I, I I do not wrong necessarily. Um, but you know, my, there's no question. Mike's playing from the back foot in this situation. Um, you know, I think I really go back to that first turn, ter say turn two charge. I'm sure he pushed up those those hounds a little too recklessly and maybe I uh, just didn't see the angles or whatnot. But um, he's probably kicking himself a little bit for that because I kind of did change that dynamic a bit on here. But, um, you know, it's not to say he doesn't have a lot of threats that are still on the board. You know, the, those ice elements only took six wounds, too, from that flank charge. So, you know, really, they're they're looking not too bad, right? He can definitely, they're still got a lot of life in them. Um, and the left side is pretty untouched, too. So, you know, this is where the ice foxes can run up to objectives. The giant can charge. I think there's just still a lot of options here. So, you know, you definitely don't want to underestimate your opponent, um, especially in a scenario-based game. Yeah, and I think, I think I'm think i going to like um, these clansmen, assuming he does get that charge hanging off the end of the of, of the unit there out of the woods. I like his his chances to, to reposition mm -hmm. from that from that charge position than if he just went straight into the woods and ended up very close to uh, the foxes and the pass guard captain. Yeah. Uh, like, these are, that. this is the part of Kings of War I freaking love. I, I love you're in a bad situation. You're looking at a board state and you're just trying to find like, is there a way out of this? Yes, is there a way absolutely. To, yeah. To do these actually, small movements, this tactical oh, totally. play. I can't agree with you more, Britain. Like that's my favorite way too. I actually like I adopt that mentality. Like actually, exactly when I play, when I deploy, like I basically assume that I've lost the game already. I'm like, oh, you know, I've pretty much lost this game. And like, and so I'm like, oh, well, I lost. Like, how can I try to like climb my way back out of it? And like, I kind of say, but I'm actually like dead serious. That's exactly my mindset. I'm pretty much every game I time I deploy, I'm like, oh, well, I just gotta play there, gotta play there. Like, let's now try to do something about it. So you know, I think um, I think it's a good mentality to kind of you know 
prepare for the worst, right? You know, that whole mentality, like Kings of War, especially, you, you, you know, there's a lot of things you can do and, and things can change very quickly, you know? I, so, you know, I, I never, ever, ever count anyone out and I, especially myself. So I try to make sure that you always look for these little things, get every advantage you can play as tight as possible, you know? Um, again, there's a lot, Mike has a lot of things going on for him. Um, and more important. Oh, go ahead. You're going to have bad stuff happen to you in a game. You're going to have yes. a bad double one. You're going to have a, a lucky whatever, and you'll be on the back foot, like from the get go unintentionally and, and sort of mentally playing that out and still trying to eke out, even if you know, you're not going to win this game doing that sort of, uh, that little bit of mental exercise to like, just kind of fight your way back in sports. It's like, you know, sometimes you just try and win the second half. Like, you know, you're not yeah. going to win, but you're going to, yeah, exactly. Right? The famous uh, was Mike Tyson saying, right? Every plan, everyone has a plan to get punched in the face, right? So, like, you know, Kings yeah. of War, you're, you know, that, that happens five times a game, right? So it's like, you know, your plan needs to be adaptive, and that's that's why, you know, especially I love units that play multiple roles and, and can do different things because they let you be adaptive on the fly, and I think that's very very important. Now, as as you see here, Mike's going in on the left. I love it. You know, I think I think that's absolutely necessary. He needs to, he needs to smash through stuff from stuff here and kind of really get some wounds going. So this is this to yep. me is, is very crucial. Um, and then and and he can easily get these foxes out of the charge arc of the Urlohi if they're even in it now. So they can just go over here and camp on this objective for the rest of the game, basically. And nothing. Yeah, that's like okay. either Mike has to send the Ur Urlohi back over there to kill them just to take that objective back. You know. And there's just this like, yeah, there's this interesting thing where if you keep playing like that, if you keep playing in a way that you are trying to eke out every small advantage um, that when it comes to be important, when it is, you know, late rounds in a, in a game that matters, you have that sort of skill set. Um, you have that ability to, to fight back from a losing position. I've just like, I've seen people want to like abandon games really early when one bad thing happens. And it's like, no, just like play, play through it. You may like, the outcome may be known, like you know you're not going to win, but you can make this a lot closer. And then in those tight situations in the future, you're you're winning. So. Totally, I totally. Those are, agree th those are like the most exciting games where, like, I thought right. I was losing, and then suddenly at turn five, you're like, oh my god, did I just pull this thing out? Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I mean, that's the most rewarding win, right? When you claw your way out of a, a, what you think is a loss, and, and you find a way, and you, things start aligning. I mean, you know, there's there's this mental exercise to kind of look at the game board and say, okay, how can I win? Like, like even if it's crazy, right? Like, I need to roll, you know, box cards twice in a row. Like, at least it's a chance, right? Like, you need to find find those chances, find, and then, you know, once you start finding those chances, then you start looking for the better options, and you kind of go from there, I think. But I think it's important mental exercise to understand, okay, well, let's assume I'm going to kill that unit, let's assume I'm going to kill that unit, you know, just start playing those games and at least trying to, to find those those things. Yeah. You know, I think it's a really strong way to do that. Uh, my my favorite win. Oh, so I'm gonna grab the mirror. So let me hop out real quick. Uh, one second. My my favorite wins are the ones where the the person obviously thinks they have the upper hand. Like they'll even talk to to passerbyers or whoever and sort of say like, "Oh, it's going well," or "Oh," and, and they have no idea. <laughs> they have no idea what's coming. <laughs> like sitting there devious. <laughs> Overconfident. Yes, yeah, uh, Zed here uh, making an Loki sandwich here in the middle of the table between some elves and some ice elementals. Um, and now we're back to trying to work out how to do this charge uh, with the clansmen unhindered. <laughs> like, do we do we have a pixel? Are they are they like? Yeah, how zoom us in, my friend. They are clipping it there. They are clipping. Can you just not make it work? Is that is that the problem? I don't. I don't know. I mean, it looks like he should be able to, unless the Thane doesn't have enough movement to get there or something. I don't is know. it that the Thane, like, I don't know the the norms for UB. Is it that he moved the Thane and placed them there, and now they're stuck there and nothing else can happen with them? Or are you kind of allowed to go back and... and not, not components. You can just hit the back button and it'll just shuffle everything back. But if you click, like, the yellow rulers and stuff, it'll mess yeah. it up so it's harder to go back. Like, you can't right. just hit the undo button. It must just be they didn't have the movement. Like, the thing yeah. couldn't couldn't get far enough forward to... Because you can see they're barely overlapping. Get right. far enough forward. Right. Because if the right. thing doesn't get far enough forward, then the clansmen will just slide into center and land on the forest yeah. anyway. Yeah. I mean, I think... Uh, Mike, moving on to shooting here. 
least it's now, possible that the clansmen are still presenting a front to the ogre palace guard, even at this angle. So if they if they fluff their charge, they have a yeah, it looks like it. So they are, yeah. at least uh, the the individual getting in there, preventing them from sliding over, even hindered, is still giving a small advantage to their chances of survival. We'll see. We have some shooting on that Earl Loki. Someone in the Probably. chat did say in Kings of War, it's never over till it's over. And that's exactly what we were saying about that. So that would have been uh, Icy Breath from the Ice Queen onto the Earl Loki. Just hoping. Just, 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 just doing wishing. something. And hoping. Yep. And praying. And hoping. Right. Failing to get it. Getting a, a Iron Resolve back. God, I would love it like uh, that has prevented a charge on the back of something. <laughs> so looks like that was uh, six wounds onto these paladins from the giant, and then another six wounds. That's good. Oh, yeah. That's that's uh, that's about what he needed. Yeah. And were they? Oh no! Wait, he rolled a, a seven. Um, that like, should be uh, enough. It says wavered. How many was there up to? Oh, they only up to eight wounds. No, no, it looks like. I don't know. I miscounted. He did. Oh yeah, he only did two wounds. I think on the second combat, on the second uh, roll there, he rolled five dice. Yeah, because those elements are hindered coming out of the trees there. Again, once I mentioned earlier, yeah. it's like. Yeah, that's yeah, the problem with, with using train like that is that you didn't get quite enough wounds to pop that unit. So even with the giant coming in there, giant strider, he doesn't care. One of the things I said Mike's going to struggle with, right, is the, the terrain. So, you know, um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Just a few wounds would have would have put him in that range to kill the unit. But fortunately, yeah. he didn't get him. So he's in but now easily now. easily picking up that uh, that other regiment of Alohi in between those yes. uh, elves and the ice elementals. Um. But now he's in that interesting situation where you have two of your own units facing each other with not a whole lot of space in between. It's a little tricky to figure out how to turn them uh, because he does have that Uraloi behind him. He doesn't necessarily want to show a the, the rear of those ice elementals to the Uraloi when they've yeah. already got six wounds on them. It's a tough spot. Absolutely. Yeah, very tough spot. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> As if it's not tricky enough, he's got units on both sides now to deal with. So, I mean... It's it's not a great spot. I mean, I think like it's one of the positions you kind of have to just let your opponent get a unit, right? You're going to get the rear charge or something, you know, have your choice. At least that's what in my head. Like I said, I want to play the aggressive game. At least, you know, that's what I want to do. So I, I to me, if I were Mike, I'd be turning both units forward, kind of going there. Um, Mike, could you draw a 20 from that? Or low? he just kind of see what his options are? Because to me, it's going to be kind of 18. the whole world. Draw an 18. Oh, it was 18. I'm sorry. It's just frosted. Okay. Yeah. He's frozen. Great. I just okay. really want that to matter. I want something no, to be yeah. out of charge I based see it. on the, the frozen. 18.1 out of charge. And you're just like, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. So I see him a little shy of the unit on the right there. I don't know if the 20 years or 18 made a difference, but um, he's at least that, that side of the board's at least an, out of an option for him. But it looks like he does have both the giant and the ice elementals that just yeah. wavered the, pal the paladins are, are now an option to be charged in the rear. So. Oof, not not a great not a great spot for Mike. Um, definitely, yeah. if I'm Mark, and, I'm, and he I'm, didn't move know. these he, he okay. didn't move these snow foxes out of the way, so the uh, so the Uralohi can't see them. See them. Well. I, I kind of expected him to walk them towards that objective. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, it's one of those things that like it's like if he charges them, I don't know how he would, but if he does, you're kind of like sure that that's fine, right? Like, go ahead and charge him, and I kind of like it where he he's maybe assuming that Uralohi was going to aim towards the, the back oh. of his units there. And that's another so, waiver over here on the right side against oh, uh, the no. clans and against the paladins there. Yeah, it looks like he needed, uh, what was it, out of all his attacks, it looks like he was hindered all, after all the, yeah. despite what we kind of said. So in fives, he got 12 hits, yeah. and and with, again, only that crushing one, he only got, looks like... He did, he, he did okay, he did nine wounds. Nine wounds, yeah, but, okay. but again, you think what would have happened if you were able to get that unhindered... You know, with yeah. the Tundra. I mean, Tinder, we would have picked him up. Um, what we right. measured yeah. earlier, yeah. I don't know if you were by, in, by one. Oh. I don't know if you were in when we measured earlier. The ogres are at least to the front. 
um, still. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. And that's, I mean, it's one of those things that when you look at, uh, you know, Mike, he doesn't have a lot of magic artifacts in, in this army. And, and that's one of those things you kind of look at is like, uh, the first two things I like to put in every army is J boots and, you know, pushing a caterpillar. Um, this unit could have really benefited from that right here. Right. So, you know, you look at a couple of those things where like, uh, I mean, hindering is such a big deal in Kings of War. You know, it really, it really, really hampers your unit's ability to do damage. You know, like Klansmen, they have a great profile, right? They have crushing one. They have, you know, a bunch of attacks. It's it's like you really want them to do maximum impact. And, and, and again, I, if I were Mike, I, would, I was looking at this list analytically, I'd say maybe a couple of those items in this in this army would have really helped. You know, you look at the two charges that if you had the ability to do those hindered, unhindered, you probably would have picked up both those units. So, you know... There's absolutely big impact from those items. So, um, so something, uh, yep. something sort of interesting. I don't know. The the last couple masters, some of the other tournaments I've played, this terrain seems smaller. Like, well, definitely, more... definitely this this, this past uh, masters up in New York, the terrain was a little larger than I think most people usually play with. And I asked the TOs like what what the story with that was, and they said, well, this is just the terrain we used to use for Warhammer. And having really big terrain for Warhammer didn't didn't matter as much because it didn't necessarily factor into the games as much, and they just haven't resized any of their terrain. Um, so so yeah, like just, just just looking at a normal like epic dwarf sized table after playing at uh, you know the Masters where, where you're looking at here the the equivalent of like eight to ten inch uh, wide terrain and up in the Masters they're, they're just, usually like 14, 16, 18 inch pieces of terrain. Like yeah, it's, I'm, it's, it's looking less at all this, I'm looking at all this open space. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, so glorious cool. open fields. <laughs> it's I gorgeous. That way about like even in Texas, I remember like with the dot deployment at that Masters, some of the pieces you're like, well, everything's basically next to each other anyway. <laughs> Like right. having, like, wall a hill wall like of a hills through the middle. Yeah, yeah, you see that for sure. I think I think it's a nice. Uh, you know, I want to say it's a nice political answer to say that the train is here, but you know, I, I think it'd be pretty. Um, you know, I, th I think they're pretty aware of the certain climate and especially, you know, sort of the, the theme that was was promoted on Fanatics, which is that war machines are going to run rampant and kill everything. And I think it's a very important footnote to the masters that happened this year was that the terrain was very much restricted and some of the pieces were absolutely massive. So, I mean, you, you had a tree that covered, you know, maybe from anywhere, if we look at this board, anywhere from that, that top hill where the the, the uh, wall is like that whole area would be a tree and some so you know you could hide you know a half to a third of your army behind that that wood where you'd be completely immune so things like that were not uncommon in the masters where so so i think i think it's very important to note there you know shout um, out Keith Conroy. yeah exactly exactly yeah <laughs> definitely keeps all these it very well but uh but you know it's one of the things that you, you just you know people are aware of it and i think tos have to be aware of that fact that that you know, terrain is a thing, and you have to you have to be a little aware of it because this this I agree with you. This is a wide open board as far as if I'm looking at this, I, I'm I'm thinking this is as wide open as it gets. And even even with that, you know, Mike's running the multiple hinder charges here that, that really kind yeah. of done him in. So you know, I think shout out to, free free dwarf players everywhere. I'm exactly, sure. I'm one of them, right? So yeah, exactly, yeah. So I was stuck. I was stuck maneuvering twenty five millimeter heavy infantry hordes around the board, and you're you're zipping around with. <laughs> Pathfinder on everything. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, okay. Pathfinder is to me still the, the the first, second, and third best rule in the game, right? It's 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 so important um, when you see terrain. I mean, I remember, I still remember actually one of my first tournaments I ever played. Um, I had half my units hindered all game, and I was like, "Whoa, this, this kind of sucks." Like, you know, I was like, "It was like, what can you do about that, right?" And so, I mean, you look at Pathfinder, you think, "Yeah, I like this rule, right? This is pretty good." And so, you know. You, when I see Pathfinder, especially on a unit that can be kind of taken as a core unit, I, I tend to value that a lot more. Um, you know, whether it's Earth Elementals or you know, so the Free Dwarf uh, Shield Breakers, which are a really, really strong unit, I think. Um, you know, the, they, the Pathfinder is such a great rule to have. Um, yeah. You know, for, for right. cause you, yeah, you can use it really defensively and offensively because you can put a unit in a wood and they get the defensive benefit of, of if they're receiving a charge, they get the, the benefit. But they can also, if, if they charge out of the wood, they're just as aggressive as they were normally. So I really like that rule. Yeah, so we have a, we, we have the decision is made. The rose the rose has been given. Um, the Earl Ojai decided to charge the, the juicy, juicy flank of the damaged ice elementals. So there's a chance here of picking them up. Um, do you think Absolutely. he would have gone there or taken one of the rears from like the other the clean ice elemental? 
Right. So he looks like he, I assume he did a double charge there, right? With the uh, yeah, with the paladin, the minor. But, but again, you don't expect that to kill him. But the the one downside to that, actually, that that I, I assume Mike played is that he has units behind the elemental. So if you do make that rear charge, then you have you're you're then going to receive a charge from other units. Where he's placed it now, he's kind of safe. Where he's, I, I don't think the elves can kind of see them there, right? I, Which I way are the the snow foxes facing? Um, that's a good question. I assume they're facing like to the right. Is that? I can't that tell. I can't all. even tell. I can't even tell. I'm looking at it, to be honest. Uh, Those look like dryads or something. No, no. I see. There's like there's like rock formation, and I think the the wolves on top of that. Yeah. So it's a little. Yeah. So I think I think they're facing right. So so they can they can charge them. You're you're absolutely right about that. Um, but again, there's no boss, right? And they're hindered, yeah. right? So, so yeah. you know, the chance they even do a wound is, is actually, oh, no, okay, I take it back to Pathfinder. I should check the rules first. So they're Pathfinder and they have Vicious. So they, they could do a wound, so they, they probably might, but, uh, you know, but they're not the most worrisome unit, right? Versus the elves are something that you do worry about, so. Yeah. Um, uh, meanwhile, over here on the right side, yeah. Mike's Klansman are in big trouble. He's, get, he's, he's getting the counter charge by those Paladins. Yep. The Ogre Captain's coming in and the, the Ogre Pals guard board. Yep. MVP. And there's the kitchen I'm sink as well, well, right? Yeah, it's like, it's like everything what, in yeah. there. Yeah. What unwavered them, or do they have something that? Oh, I so, guess they didn't go in because you're, you're right. They, oh, they're probably they still engaged. Wavered. You're right. So they're just yeah. they're just in there, yeah. just wavered. Correct. So, so, so it's palace guard um, against so the board. There was a headstrong rolled. So what was, I don't okay. know. Okay, actually, you are correct. They are headstrong. The paladin are headstrong. So. Assuming he passed that, they're going in as well. Again, yeah, because I saw a headstrong roll done, and it, they rolled like a four or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're so they're golden then. Yep. So I mean, really, really highlighting the strength of Basili list, I think. Really, Mark Mark's done a really good job of, of kind of showing the resiliency and the and the hitting power and what used in combination, right? I mean, over Palace Guard, I mean, uh, how how much work have these guys done, right? I mean, it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous, right? Like so. Right. so yeah, I find when I face a list like this that everything else in the list is meant to just let Ogre Palace Guard kill you one by one. Oh yeah, oh absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to assume that. I mean, I know I I, uh, I played Jeremy Jamal Javal. I know you play him as well, Britain, right? I think every now and then. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's got a very tough Basilia list as well, and I know Ogre Palace Guard are the are the stars of that list, and it really I think they're a unit that if you're a Basilia player, you should be looking at um a lot because because they. Just a workhorse unit, right? There's just a solid core. They come in at a good price, and then they just can can do it, that balance of offense and defense very, very well. Um, okay, I see some rolls here. Um, yeah, Bane, Bane Chan on Paladins, and he got it. On the okay. Up here. Again, so you put some heat on there, right? He's not expecting to kill anything, but if he does, it's a bonus at the point. I mean, those guys are basically on uh, borrowed time, and again, they must have passed their headstrong roll as well, right? So again, showing the resiliency of. Basilia just coming through here. Just just so many options right now, right? So little is dead really from the Basilia side when you think about it. I do love that. Oh look, you wavered me. Ha ha. Right. No, you did not. It, it yeah. is, yeah. Until until you roll that one or two, right? And then, then you kinda hate it. But yeah, I exactly. Love that roll, but I just love the feeling of winning mm -hmm. a headstrong roll. For sure. Well, for sure. Yeah. Now that it's a one or two, it feels even more insulting when you blow it. Like yeah. it used to be fifty fifty, and you're like, oh, yeah. I don't know about this headstrong. And now you sort of count that it's going to happen in your head, and you roll that one and two, and you just feel extra useless. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I mean, exactly. I feel useless often, right. so it's nothing new. It's fine. Let's see if these ogres can finally kill these foxes in the woods. Go, ogres! Let's see it. Um, it appears and that they yes. can, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Unless the thing is close enough, which they are. So oh, he was. Yeah, so we're inspired. So he hit the roll twice, so... Boom. I, got him. I know, I know. One six, one six. So the wrong order on those dice, right? Should have been six, six, one, one, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but. Oh know. my God, if he snaked them twice, that would have been amazing. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> like, but how can I where, skip Mark Beer? <laughs> this, is, this is where, for me, the, the move from the Aloha to finish off those ice elementals, hopefully, or to try and get some real work on them, is, is kind of paying off because. He's betting he can eventually get these clansmen picked up. Yeah, he's moving these. Uh, he's pivoting these palace guard over to support this other side, where he's going to lose a bunch of those. He's going to lose those paladins on our left, his right. But then it's like it's a race. It's you know 
those ice elementals will probably go down to combined attacks eventually. Then it's a giant against palace guard. I'm betting on the palace guard. So it's it's sort of like in that war of attrition over there, he can eventually win if the palace guard get over there and, and weigh in. So he needs that Ur Alohai to keep this backfield from engaging and getting in there. And that's that's I think why the palace the Ur Alohai did what it did. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, I think it's it's Ooh. kind of he opened up opportunities for himself and and paying dividends uh, now for for that. And it's, it's a chance to pick up ice elementals, like yeah, yeah exactly. I mean that that's still unit that you're gonna worry about um, every turn of the game, right? So, um, can you draw arc on the berserker elves behind him as well? Just kind of see where they, yeah. So they don't um, have it, right? If he backs up, if he backs up, it looks like. Um, yeah, no, think, I don't think he will if he backs up. I think at least at least two inches of it for sure. One inch looks a little dicey, at least for my eyeball. But oh, that um, makes it even better if right. it's like a, oh, I, I love those. Yeah, three, exactly. Three up he, to get out of their arc. Yeah, exactly. I don't even know if he looked at it. Did he look at it? Not who knows, right? Like the marks is like fuck it. I'm just gonna go in there and just kind of deal with it. So so that's gonna be that's gonna be twelve wounds on those uh, ice elementals. He's gonna need a five to get rid of. Seven and a twelve. Is that the ice cream down below? Yeah, yeah. they were inspired. Okay. Mark gives you know little little f's as they say, right? It gives no f's, and so here's the his decision now, right? Do you back up? Do what do you do, right? And then the other question there is, I mean, the Aloha can oh, oh pixels. <laughs> oh. Oh, so now he's checking. Now, now he's saying, "Let me see." Now he's checking. How, yeah, how far and, back and, do I have? Yeah, to Yeah, that one look. I think that one looked too close to him. He said, "Hmm, I don't know about that." But, uh, but again, like I said, just picking up the elementals again. A big play there from from Mark. Mark really, really coming yeah. out strong this game. Um, playing it very well. I'd say if you're honest, if you're an aspiring Basilia player or just aspiring, honestly, aspiring player in general, watch this game closely and pay attention to these, these like moves and, and how you play it. Cause I think Mark played it very correctly here, which is kind of the way he played the flanks and the, and you know, the, when to play aggressive, when to play defensive, when to, to play a, you know, a, a counterattack army correctly. This, this is a, it's basically a class on how to do it. We're going to have to, whoever the, after the, the reporters are after this, are going to have to find out what went on with a Tundra Wolf charge. Yes. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's, that's dictated, definitely something dictated asking. the right side of the game. Like I understand what was going on with the left. This this sort of seemed how I thought it would play out. The Earl Ohi would be annoying, and he would eventually engage with that group of paladin, maybe a little weaker. But that that right side blew wide open. So yeah, especially that Mike had the speed advantage there, right? He had the the wolves, he had the frostfang cavalry, he had the the guy on the on the frostfang. Um, yeah, it really changed the night. One, one small charge can really make a big impact, which is which is why you know. You need to make sure to kind of really check your angles and check your arcs and and you know do that because because yeah there you go I mean maybe you just think he wouldn't do it maybe you just thought he would not dare right you know sometimes you just don't expect that from your opponent and I think he just failed to get those ice elementals yeah he's like right. one short of killing them. yep yep as I'm talking I can talk right through the important combats as usual so yeah <laughs> um, yeah. Nine yeah, wounds yeah. of the seven is only a sixteen, and they're dash seventeen. So yeah, yeah. that uh, exactly. like the uh, the bane chanted paladins did did good work there, but uh, the swordsman just just didn't quite so, do enough wounds. A little light at the end of the tunnel, right? A little bit of hope. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, let's let's definitely. Uh, so yeah, exactly. It's good to have one thing away for sure. I, I think I don't know if they're pausing to kind of just double check everything, but the next combat I assume would go into the. Uh, Plansman, yeah, right? Well, that, that'll be very interesting to see what happens there. Um, I'm a little scared I for them. Like yeah, I think. Go boom, boom. Yeah, we'll see. Right, they have a good nerve. They have a lot of value yeah. there. Um, actually, give us a tour of her room there. Appreciate that. Tour. <laughs> yeah. No, I said you're kind of readjusting there. You look very comfortable. I'm, I'm, I'm on jealous. my bed, so I'm like. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Brindley's yelling at his computer in the living room, so. Yeah, yeah, I do that every day too. That's that's. You yell at Brindley's computer every day. Exactly, dude. Exactly. There's a Discord for it. Uh, I'll send you the link. Good. He made right. another group. It's a Brindley. Uh, come yell at Brindley group. Yeah. I am the leader. Every, obviously, I do it. In everybody. It's it's everybody but Brindley yell at Brindley's computer. Yeah. So I, we talked a little earlier about some of some of Mike's background. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Mark's background. Um, 
He's from the east coast of Canada in New Brunswick, which is it's the, I think it's the part of Canada I forget exists that kind of just wrap that's like east of Maine. <laughs> right, right. It's definitely that in Newfoundland or out there, right? And then he basically in in person basically only plays Jay Rosado. So Universal Battle has been a big boon for expanding his uh, number of opponents from one to many. Yep. Right. I know. I know. Mark's no stranger to UB. Right. I, I, I understand yep. he's played in multiple call arm tournaments and and um, heard many reports from players that he's kind of experienced in that. So um, yeah, it's I think one of the things I love about UB. You get you get players from you know places that you know all over the world, and and you know that that brings a whole lot of new ideas and new interesting art. You know styles and, and yeah so he mark learned about ub from uh what's it called uh matt young hobby sauce mentioning it and awesome. then he uh he jumped in and and has probably gotten he'd say 40-ish games of ub as well as playing in the last call to arms so he's Very really cool. been crushing games on the platform he said he's played some really good players like chris fisher kyle Poole, matt young you put Dan Miner in that list, but I don't know about the, the really good player <laughs> part. Ouch, um, ouch, a little burn Dan Miner there. Uh, but you're not wrong. You can keep going. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he's actually building a Basilia army. Awesome. Um, so he's uh, he's he's sort of playing in UB, the, the army that he wants to build, paint, and play in sort of the real game, which is that, that cool version of UB you get to do. Versus some of the other folks who are playing absolute filth, they would never paint in a million years. Like, uh, you know, Rackin. Uh, I need to cut, in, cut in for one second. Uh, the 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 UB room is frozen up, so I'm going to take a side of screen share, pop out, and pop back into the new room they created. UB's been having yeah. a lot of trouble with all the traffic, so uh, sorry. Continue. No, that's uh, I saw that going on in the side chat, which is why I was going through Mark's whole background to, to fill some time. <laughs> No, I mean that's very interesting. I actually want to. I, I didn't pay attention because I was just listening to you. So, Go and then, uh, so cool. Yeah, he he built this mainly as a two thousand point list, and the two the two spicy captains were his add in late add in for the twenty three hundred points. So, cool. No, I love I love the, uh, the captains. I mean, they're they're cool. They they do a lot of interesting things with like you know the way, especially the way he's equipped them with the pendants. Like you throw them in the way. It's a cool model. Sorry, I tried to sneeze there on camera. Uh, so yeah, so um, there's a lot of again. He, I think those are there's, there's always those choices that you have as a player that you want to play with that you throw in there that are a little unexpected, right? So I, I think you know if you look at an army, you take only the best options. So, like it, those are things that people are gonna know how to deal with. But those captains, those you know those random wild cards, the units end up being like your kind of special sauce, your special secret to your army that makes it good. And I think that's what kind of makes each army a little bit different. That's why I always look for in each army is kind of like what makes it different. What does that player know about that army that I don't, right? I mean, I think I think if you're making an army, especially if you're a newer player, you should always try to kind of like find those units and, and just keep playing with them, right? Even if they perform poorly, um, you know, learn them. Kind of like figure them out because when you have that, that knowledge that your opponent doesn't as far as like, oh, okay, I know how to play my army. I know these little tricks and you throw a curveball, um, you know, you're, you're really going to catch your opponent off guard. And so those are one of the things I, I'm a big advocate of playing your style and play and, and not switch your armies a lot, it's kind of learning your units and, and kind of adapting. And I think, you know, Mark kind of done that because really like how often do you see, you know, over captain guards? I mean, probably not a lot. Right. So, you know, clearly they've worked for him and I, I, I think they're pretty cool. This this battle, right? They're, they're where they need to be. They're, you know, giving inspiring the ogres when they need to be. And they're kind of, you know, just, just getting in the way. So, so um, for units you know, relatively cheap, at least within the Basilia list, I think it's a, it's a smart option. So taking a look at the chat as we're as we're as Atkins is rapidly working through the technical difficulties to get back into the recreated game, we have a we have a shout out to the Maritimes, which I think is the only time someone will shout out to the Maritimes Hell ever. Yeah. Um, I feel bad. I I had to spend a few months in Halifax for various jobs and. I say have to because I'm from California and that's about as far away as I think I can get. Um, but it was very nice if I hadn't been working 14 hours a day. Um, I'm sure it would have been lovely. And then we have a, a call out to Ashley wearing tie dye. Is that is that something to do with Jake? This is actually my tie dye shirt that I wore at Masters in my when I tried to pretend to be Jake. 
Yeah, so there was a who wore it better between Ashley and Jake in the first round at the Masters Best of the Rest. It was um, I don't know that that's something you should be proud of. I am proud of it. <laughs> like, dre dressing like Jake is not really a, a life goal, I think, for, for I feel a lot like of people. It's given me a great respect for men who have to wear horrible swim trunks because I wore men's swim shorts the whole day because that's like the only pink shorts I could find and that mesh in there is not a thing that I it was bad I did not appreciate it yeah but you won the prize right that's what matters right yeah totally yeah men, men have it so hard wearing uncomfortable materials yeah there are clearly pockets in my jeans right now obviously um yeah so besides uh yeah that's the shout out to the Maritimes, New Brunswick, and Ashley wearing tie dye. That's about what we got going on in the chat right now. So. <laughs> right, right, uh, which is cool. I mean, I, I like the all that new, uh, new maritime time zones. I know uh, I have a friend that lives in Newfoundland, which is like Atlantic time zone, which is I, I found out an hour and a half of get ahead of East Coast, which I don't know how you get a half hour in there. But um, as I'm ramping okay, on we, here, we uh, like should we have, have it back now. Thanks. Game, yeah, we got a, we got a game back here so We're back live yeah exactly we made it um stuff happening i see wounds i see a lot of wounds actually that that looks like 10 13 wounds is he rolling nerve right away? and a seven that's nerve yeah seven i think they're good right so 10 13 plus 7 is 20 they should be higher than that it should be at least a 21 i think um, um, they are 2022 20, oh 2022 is that a is that a waiver that might be a waiver I think that's oh and ogre have brutal right or no yeah, the ogres are in there, so I'm pretty sure they have blue as well. Blue, blue. Blue, blue. Yeah. Over pass guard, are brutal. Yeah, so that's a 21. That's that's got to be a waiver, I think. Um, which which I mean, they're alive. That's great and all, but um, but waiver is not really a good role either, right? So I mean. No, I think it's 22. He did. Is it? He has seven wounds on them. No. I mean, 14 wounds plus a seven is 21 plus brutal is 22, but I think they're. No, you're right. I can't count. So you're, you're absolutely right. So 14 plus seven plus the brutal is definitely 22. Um, think Someone that, you want know, a problem? Uh, wait, wait. Let's let's do the math here. So uh, do they not remember the brutal? What, what happened here? This is an ethical question. Let's uh, we we do not correct them unless they ask. No, yeah, we, we we sit by here, but um, hurts me. We'll assume they 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 had something knowledge we didn't know, but um, their market has wavered and they're integrity. moving on. So, journalistic integrity, unless they ask right, you. Right. I I did the math wrong. Maybe they did too. Who knows? But uh, I mean, if their waiver is still not a good spot, right? But oh wait, right. doesn't the thing? No, no, the 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 thing has the rally banner. Does yeah. It have the rally yeah, banner? yeah. 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 Yep. Okay, never we missed one. Good. There you go. There They're you go. right. We're wrong. Absolutely. Sure. Um, That's the first right. time we're, in my life. We're good at this okay. game. So he's got a built-in rally, right? Is that right? Okay, cool. No, yeah, he's no, got rally two. Is that right? No, it's no, just no rally the thing's one. got this. Yeah, he's got Telenar standard that, that gives him rally one. Gotcha. Okay. So, okay, cool. That's, again, more options of, of a new army that I would have never guessed in a million years. So. Yeah, I wouldn't have known that, right? I don't. So rally right. is. Rally is super rare now in the in the third edition right now. I, I felt like at the end of second edition, Rally was just sprinkled over every list like a freaking mm. <laughs> like the the salt bear just on every right, every right. You know, little rally somewhere. Um, and now it's it's a lot more rare. Like I'm feeling as a as a oftentimes orc player, I'm feeling a lot more love with my war drums than I was at the end of second, where it was like, oh, everyone gets this. Um, so it is a spicy little Northern Alliance thing. They can take that rally one uh, on a solid list in the middle, which is, I think, what Mike was trying to play, where everyone sort of groups around that. That would have been great. But yeah, here, here it came in. I mean, it's an extra turn that those things are not crushing your face. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they're at least alive, right? Like the rally came into play, right? So it's very important that we realize yeah, that. Yeah, but that, I mean, that clansman unit, you, this is just one of those things that feels terrible. It sat on a hill all game waiting to pick its charge. It right. did it, right. wavered them, they headstrong, right. came right back in, and you're not going to do anything else the rest of this game. 
Right. And that, right. that's that's where you look at the unit and I think that you need to be evaluate you should put some artifacts on them, right? You pay 230 points for this horde, you put them in a position, you want exactly like Britain said, you wait all game to do something, they need to deliver, right? Whether that's that 10 point brutal item gives an extra point of damage or those J boosts that give sure they're getting the right charge it counts or melee you know, four. Like right. melee four is tough. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Any any because any savvy opponent knows that if you especially if you don't have the J boost or those the caterpillar things like that, your opponent knows that you're gonna have to charge in those positions. So, you know, obviously in Mike being as, as good as he is, like he he tried to get around it with the with the you know the caster there or, or the uh thing in the way, but just couldn't do it, right? So it's just you know, Mark Mark played a very tight game, very smartly well, played he, in, you know, around the weaknesses. He took that first turn. He rushed everyone and kind of forward into those woods as like his little power play to get to get in there to get around that and make them really tough to charge for those infantry units. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, and again, like I, said, I wish I wish they had fury. I wish they had headstrong. I wish I had something to kind of get back in the game. But um, you know, I, like I said, I think my hope Michael reevaluate his list. Um, I haven't seen Mike play no alliance. To be fair, I don't know if this is something that he's. I think it's new. Out. Yeah, I mean, I know he played Faringer he's played in the past. Em yep, and he played Empire Dust for a while, and then he played Undead right. Masters. So I was I was really surprised to see him play in Northern Alliance. Maybe he's just trying it out to see. Very fair, yeah, very fair. It sounds yeah. like I can tell uh, Mark's been playing Basilia for a little while now, right, from what Britain said. So, No, I don't know. I think I think he just started taking it. Um, okay. I don't actually have that information. I just know that he said he picked Basilia the same reason he picked, I think, the San Jose Sharks as uh, his hockey team, which is important to Canadians, um, because they're pretty is what he said. Okay. I, that's good. Did we, did, setting, I think. Yeah. Are you suddenly pulling for Mike now that I mentioned he's a Sharks fan? And and I honestly don't know whether he meant the uniforms are pretty or just he has a particular set of crushes on some players. But he just said they're pretty. So. Uh, well, yeah. their, their color scheme is like purple and teal. It's it, it's a pretty good color. Oh, it's uh, it's like teal. Yeah, I don't think there's really many purple. It's like a lot of It's black and teal. Is it black and teal? Yep. Okay. Okay. I only lived like five miles from the stadium for seven years. I think I would know the color. Yeah, right. and we've got we've got Ray <laughs> Ray Shields over here trying to give us a good discussion point, and we're talking hockey colors. So, sorry, yeah. Ray. Sorry, Ray. Yeah. Priorities, Ray. Pri priorities, man. Nope. Now he's weighing in on the hockey chat. Oh so yeah, I was just waiting for that. It's <laughs> like he's not weighing in hockey. Something's wrong. So yeah. Exactly. We have open Pandora's box. Exactly. We're trying um, to talk hockey. Yeah, he's gonna All right. So it right looks like the the giant is picking up a uh, pick up the paladins there. Yeah, I did. So he did it. He did two solo charges, right? Like he put the yeah. damage yeah. elementals for for giggles, and then he finished them off with the giants. Yeah. And this is sort of how I thought this would work out. Like he's going to probably not pick up those swordsmen. Um, the the even if he does, the paladins are going to be able to take out the the damaged elementals, or someone will. And then it's going to come down to kind of possibly a damaged giant versus the palace guard um, that's left. Uh, you know, it's it's important again for new players. Like it's a peace trading game. This is just sort of how it happens. Like every time you're attacking or being attacked, you're expending resources and losing sort of resources on a unit, un unless you have Morgoth um, and are cheating. But so you got to sort of look at like this happens and this happens, and you're going to lose stuff usually. But it's about being in that advantageous position. Two to three of those trades down the line. Yeah, exactly. I mean. I think Mike really wishes he had his unit unwavered right now because if he, I mean, if you guys give him a chance to kill something, right? Because like that, yeah. them being wavered right now is just such a brutal blow because they're not doing the damage they need to. And yeah. I, I mean, give him credit for right now. I mean, he got double charge on the Erlo he at least with the Berserkers in there, so he's he's mm -hmm. making something happen. They got the Thunderous back. They're not, you know, one thing that was kind of cool about them clean clean up that the unit of of Elohi they charged initially is that they get to do damage. Now, as I'm talking again through combats, I see dice being rolled. So, the elementals doing damage. Um, I believe. I oh, I see. I see he's a hot roll. I see a double six there, and then I see it follow up with the six. So I'm trying to figure out where. Yeah, the wounds no, that's came that, on. that's going to be the uh, ice elementals. Though. 
for a thermal resolve. So okay, so they rolled they rolled hot on that first nerve roll, double sixes. But again, inspiring yeah. is a rule in Kings of War, and it, it's a very good rule as you can tell right here. So um, you know you get to roll those sixes again, and they turn into you know a six total. And so you know that, that, that's where he's at right now. So um, yeah, and that that looks to be about. You know, I guess Mike has it. He has a chance. Sorry, he has a chance to crack this early. He and if he does again, that'll, that'll go a long way to kind of keep putting him back a little bit into the game. Can you can you zoom in? Am I missing the inspiring source on those guys? No, it's 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 the one up here. It's the priest. It's the one I'm already clicked on. It, it's yeah, okay. it's it's a little confusing. I think myself I actually look at it. these guys are inspired, but sneaky priest, sneaky priests. Um. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think. Man, I would have loved him to fit Martyr's Prayer on that priest in this list. Yeah, Martyr's Prayer is one of those abilities I think is still super strong, right? Like it's it's actually crazy not to take it. I think so. Um, but you got Sam and Chris there doing her healing thing, right? Um, why do you not double down on it, right? I mean, it's a lot of oh, points. Yeah. Sam and Chris I think take, I... taking wounds at off the the Martyr's Prayer priest. Ooh. Right, right. I think, chain I think that I think that thing just just wavered the paladin uh, regiment on a, on his own. Yeah, no way. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a ten there. Well, oh, holy well, shit! The ten for the nerve tick. Okay, well, they were really hurt. They were hurt. He had a chance they, to pick them up. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's fair. I mean, I think that this might have been an unlucky waiver. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing was hindered and only has three attacks, so. Uh, and that's going to be turn five. Woo! Okay, Time what, happened to the, uh, here. what happened to that combat? The, oh, uh, I see. How many was that Erlo he have? Erlo, he has only three. Okay. Did I miss that combat? Or? Oh, okay. Yeah, it went by pretty quick. They, okay, sorry. That yeah, was yeah. a giant whiff, right? Three it was wounds. a pretty big whiff, yeah. Yeah, you feel like the elves would have done more, right? The elves berserkers? 15 attacks on threes, crush or thunderous one. Like, yeah, it's about 10 hits and then five wounds, right? From should, yeah, you should be in that four to six wound range just from them. And then even if the foxes don't do jack, that's okay. Yeah, so, I mean, again, Mike, you know, a little bit on the receiving end of bat, like I said, this game. Not not necessarily that it's the game, that's the fault of the game, but Mark's been rolling pretty pretty hot on his nerve checks, right? He hasn't really, you know, and he, he, sometimes, you know, he, you roll average dice and, like, I sometimes call that hot in the sense that, like, you don't roll bad is, is, is good, right? Like, that's... Well, that's Crucial, Most yeah. board gamers that I know, if you gave them average dice, yes. like no hot, no cold, we'll take it hands down. Like, we'll take it every I'm time. Like a all the time, I'm content. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, and I noticed that like Mark's got that average dice right now, which is which is you know at least very very strong, right? So he's oh, he's making the nerve snap. checks he needs. And so the ogre palace guard are going to be using their their strider boots to make this an unhindered charge when they come in on the uh, on the ice elementals here. Like, yeah. They don't even need that, do they? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, I, really I, I don't either. Man, they have what eight, nine wounds on already. Jeez. Yeah, yeah I mean, maybe it's the maybe it's the only chance they're gonna get. But right, use it now, right? Oh, it's a front charge. It's a front. Okay. It's, it's a front charge. Yeah, they were just in the front. Yeah, okay. yeah I mean, even still, yeah, right? But use it. I yeah. don't know. They could, depending on how they move, they could get hung up on that obstacle again and. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, I mean, maybe it's, it's it's I think it's, it's turn good. five, and at this point, like Marcus, Marcus kind of killed all of, all of Mike's unit strength. Like yeah. those ice elementals are in big trouble. That that clansman horde is in big trouble. It's um, cool. The 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 half elf berserkers are going to win this thing for him. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, hot charge, top of turn two. That bolter's going to kill three units. Right. One a turn. Right. We'll see. <laughs> There's still. Yeah. Oh man. That bolt shooter. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think. Um, I mean, I think scenario like this is the, the time when you start looking at scenario, right? Like, okay, wait, who's actually playing this scenario, right? So let's look at it. And I think the answer right now is nobody. So, like, let, let's figure I'm out. I mean, on that one objective marker up in the top. Sure. Yeah, right. he's got the one in the back. So that's the plane. I think it's both players got another unit at this point. So, yeah, um, there's there, there's these two here that Mark has units sitting on. So Mark, yeah, yeah he, he like yeah, technically has him, but like only by accident, right? So, you know, Mike's kind of moves the unit back, saying, "Hey, you know, 
I wouldn't. Perfect. I wouldn't say that was. I think calling it by accident is a little harsh. He he kind of moved into that area and. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I, I meant only in an accident the sense that they've charged the horde of clansmen and yeah. happened to end up there. But yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, this, this sure. is what I'm saying. Mike's kind of taking advantage of that, where he's like pushing his unit back, right? So, so he's he's pushing it back and he's saying, "Okay, charge I mean, me, go ahead, position, right?" Yeah, but Samuel Chris just lands on one of them. <laughs> like, right. right. Yeah, that's right, the thing. Right. Like, like Mark has basically been sitting on four objectives for the entirety of the game. Right? Absolutely, and he had he's had the advantage of the whole game, right? So, so I, I think don't mess only, it up. The, yeah, the only way you mess it up is, is if Mike gets the opportunity with the Berserkers maybe to come in and do some damage. Um, you know, they do have a wild charge. They have six-inch range. It's a lot of range. So they, they're actually threatening some of those units over there. So, you know, a kick on the Palace Guard, they're going to kill it. But can they, you know, what if he gets hot and he rolls a good counter charge from the Palace Guard and, and ends up picking up a unit there, right? Maybe he can swing a little something back in his direction. Least, but Mike, that's one of the things I'm looking for right now. It's like... You know, you're hoping for these these live ball shots of, of doing, you know, wounds and killing units. So I think he I mean he's got Samar Chris and he's got a captain. Yeah. Both of those are perfect for turning around and sitting on objectives. Yeah. It's it's such a strong position. He can he can sack that uh palace guard unit towards the middle of the board if he needs to. He doesn't care. He has stuff to to sit on objectives um pretty cleanly. We'll see. For sure, oh. yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you. It's a, it's a strong list. Like I said, it's a very strong list. And that, that's one of the strength of units like that. You know, Simicus is popular, I know, but over Palace Guard Captain, right? Who takes that, right? But, you know, that's where you do things your opponent wasn't expecting, right? And that if that's a, turn six, you turn nimble and pivot and run, you know, a direction that, you know, capture objective your opponent set coming, that's an advantage you have over an opponent, right? So maybe, maybe it's something he's going to try to do. I don't disagree with you at all. I think I think it's Mike is definitely, again, on the back foot and, and, and fighting you know, fighting for his life here. So he's going to really I'm, eat a snake out of something. I'm going to say you take those over cat. Oh, those over captains when you're playing Basilea or you want to play Basilea and you know, you're about to play pillage. Right. Well, right. It's, it's a tough one, right? Because so he had that, he had that, um, palace guard captain with the, with the pendant, with the pendant. And right, that's yeah. really close to Nias cost. Yeah. Like to just buying Nias. Who's so good? <laughs> yeah, sure. He's so brutal. So it's like, yeah, he did some wounds and that helped and and that stuff. It's just, gosh, it's so expensive. I I love I love the ogre characters in the ogre list at the slightly cheaper point value where you can just get so much utility and use out of them. When he's yeah. bumping up to like 165 points for that, it's you know it's tough, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I played my uh, my second round match this morning against a uh, gentleman from England, uh, Cy Brand, I think his name was. And he was playing Rats. And he brought, I think, three of the Enforcers and one of those, like, Night Terrors or whatever. And so it, it was all, you know, 50, 50 mil individual uh, large infantry guys. And, like, when you're looking at four of those, and you're playing pillage. You're like, okay, great. I, so I spend all my time trying to kill your unit strength. And at the end of the game, you still have these four guys that just turn and go sit on objectives. And like, there's there's not much you can do. So yeah, you um, you you basically have to table them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm I'm playing super elite undead, so I I can't be everywhere at once, right? Like, rats is just a super hard matchup. So I'm kind of feeling that like large large infantry individual burn right now. I was feeling bad for you till you said we were playing undead. <laughs> right. And now it's like, well, no, two no complaints. Right. It's like, do you have Morgoth on your list? Yeah. Go I said I was playing back. undead. Did you not hear me when I said I was playing undead? Right. Go 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 cry <laughs> on your uh your giant tier list of A units. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's it's undead is definitely no, it's, a great spot. And I think yeah, exactly it's one of those things you look at here, um, this matchup and you think, you know. Did, did the episode just have the stronger list here when it came to some of these matchups? And and maybe, yeah, maybe that is the case, right? Um, it, they looked like well balanced. It's just that early, like he won first term, he pushed it forward, and he took exactly. off one of his flank holders, and it it just turned. Like, yeah, I, I really like the facility list. To be very honest, I mean, I think a lot of the things about it to me are are very very strong, and, and things that I play tested and, and played against. Um, um, the the paladin. Um, Sorry, the aura, the head, the sorry, what do you call it? The 
Elite oh, Aura. Yeah, Elite Aura for the Paladins. Fantastic option. I mean, you already see it doing a ton of damage here um, so far this game. And, and you know, it's one of those things that just, they're just so, you know, they, they've done a good job balancing the whole defense and offense and counterattack uh, well at the current iteration of their list. So, um, you know, I'm actually not surprised to kind of see, see some of the results, especially in some of the, you know, again, not just the right flank, but in the middle area where we thought, you know, maybe the no Lions could smash, excuse me, the, uh, yeah, no Lions could, yeah, smash to the left side. They didn't even really do that. They kind of struggled there a bit, and, and you know, we see Morgan's kind of getting beat up, and and uh, Basilia just doing Basilia things, you know, grinding away, healing away. You know, units are not quite gone yet to fight multiple hits, so I see now the Tundra Speaking Wolves Speaking of not quite injured. gone. Snow Foxes. Yeah. Yep, got the... Uh, oh, Snow Foxes. Yeah, snow Foxes. Clutch. Yeah, snow Foxes. Clutch Snow Fox. Oh. Right. Those Snow Foxes, <laughs> just like, even the ones that the um, Ogre Palace Guard hit, got the double ones. They're just, like, very resilient. Unkillable no right. foxes. Unkillable swarms. <laughs> so much tougher than they look. Exactly. Well, there's there's uh, nothing to say seven, about units that it has. on the thing. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, their nerves is 9-11. It's not terrible, right? It's like, you gotta, like, at least do enough wounds to get there. So, um, you know, I'd say the, the random Basilia units are, like, kind of you know, the, the elite units are they have lower attacks. They, have, they struggle to kind of get up there. Um, it's a it's the hard and fast rule that the smaller the model, the the worse the nerve roll against it. Yeah. Tidal swarms impossible yep. to remove off the board. Right, right. Like just a collection of starfish will hold up any unit. I remember I got almost completely tabled, and the only unit I had left was the tidal swarm against Ryan. They don't die. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. They're. I mean, yeah. I love. I love swarm units. I mean, I'm a big fan. Um. I like some armies. I play a couple armies where I have a lot of massive hunting packs from dwarves, and, and they're fun because they're a swarm unit, but they have 11, 13 nerves. So it's like they're actually tough to remove. So it's like you got to deal with that for 65 points, you know? Like, the, go massive, ahead. massive hunting Shock packs. Here, clansmen gone. Yeah, the clansmen are gone. Yep. The other exactly. yeah, that, and, that was okay. somewhat expected. They took a. That was. They were on, what, 14 wounds, Ogre Palace Guard coming in unhindered. That's a. That's yeah. gonna put them on snakes pretty easily. For sure. Um, so 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 now Mark has, has basically cleared the, the right side of the board. Uh, and Mike just has a few units left here in the middle. So we'll see if he can get anything going. Um, I will say that, that the way they're doing scoring for this tournament is Northern Alliance. Uh excuse me. Yeah, uh, Northern Kings. No, not Northern, Northern Kings. Northern oh, Kings. Kings. He's playing yeah, Northern yeah. Alliance. Yeah, playing exactly. Things. Yeah. Uh, Northern, Alliance, every, sorry, Northern Alliance wins. Northern Alliance wins. Eh. But uh, every every um, every objective that you sit on is is plus one uh, point, plus one bonus point at the end. So um, any any and all objectives that Zed can manage to keep under his control at least give him some bonus points, even if he loses. Uh, yeah. So now, so now point, it's going to be one of those those funny things where we talked about the snow foxes going and grabbing an objective and that sort of thing. Um, right. Do the elves have arc on the Earl Ohi? Let's take Good it. question. I, I, my boss tells me yes, but uh... oh, I don't know. I think, I can't I tell think there's it, wings. There's wings in the way. Stupid wings. Human enhance here. Okay. No. How's, how's this guy? I don't think he's got I it. Think, oh, I, I think, think it gets it. The wings in the way. Does. I think it does, though. Yeah. I think he gets it. How are you going to have an overhang on a UV model? Jeez. Um, right. <laughs> um, yeah, my, I mean, my, it's close, but I, I think that's in. But, I mean, it, I, I, do you even charge that, right? It's like, that's the question. I mean, probably. Yeah, right? but the, right. the thing is, is, if you don't, those snow foxes are wavered. That Uralohi flies right over you. Yeah, and flies, flies over and gets this, this other objective over here. Um, well, I mean, you could you could definitely flank the Uralohi and then when you reform, you could get behind the hill, so maybe all those other ogres over there on the right can't see you. Yeah, it's just... Oh. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, it's a tough call, right? This I mean, is what, you know how I said I love playing from the back foot? When you're, like, this far on the back foot, it, it stops being fun again sometimes. Sure, sure, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> when you're trying to not get 20 owed, right? It's like, all right, how do I get one <laughs> right. point? It's not right. that the same as it's trying to get a draw, right. at least. Um, for sure, yeah. It's and, a fun now's, now's, now's when you pick, like, what's my one, like, moral victory I'm going to try to get in this last exactly. turn to feel okay about this game? Like, exactly. What, what, what one unit or one objective right. am I getting? At least I'm going to take this unit out, double one. Oh, right. <laughs> right. 
Exactly. To me, it's I, 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 if I'm Mike, I'm like, you know, screw those Ogre Palace card. I mean, they've been sitting back there. How many wounds do they have on them? At least a couple, right? Like, they've, they've killed half my army. It was like, yeah. I mean, they, got, they have one know. wound. One and the oh, other one. Oh, my God. All, all they ever took, all they ever took was the, the, the charge from thing, right? thing. And yeah. they've had Samarchus. Remember yeah. when Samarchus flew over there? Every turn since. Boop, yeah, that boop, one, one just tick, one tick, off. tick. Yeah, exactly. And one yeah. of the power of that, the sort of aura that oh. gets to, you know, get a free heal, right? And this is yeah. what this is what oh. happens when oh. you fight. I love it. I love it. He no, he's, he's agrees with me. Mike agrees with me. He said, you know what? Fuck these guys. They've they've been a pain in my ass the whole game. <laughs> I just want to kill this unit and and say screw you, right? So, right. and if things go well. Him, Going right. over there and giving them a bloody nose. Right, right, right. Let's assume that you get all hits and all wounds, right? Whatever, right? So, so you're gonna kill the unit, right? Let's just assume that. Like, then what happens, right? What do you? What's your point to do next, right? I'm, I'm, I, your ogre can't see me. I'm ahead of him. Um, yeah, I get Samarchus, and and you know, what? Who's, who knows what else? It's just that it's like maybe the ice queen is doing her breath weapon on the Uralogi here. This is that annoying thing you run into with Basilio, which is it's the end of the game ish like it's getting there you you swear you hurt this unit before but suddenly they feel untouched <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, and it happens with undead too the classic like i swear i hit these soul reavers before how are they at zero damage right right just, it's like that was, that was before i fed them three units to life leech off of whoops yeah yeah it, it's it feels so soul crushing um not to pun on soul reavers but it's it's so soul crushing to you're like, I swear I hit these. Why are they undamaged? How have they been walking through my entire list and, and still not a scratch on them? And it's just that little like Iron Resolve plus Samarchus plus something else. Just yeah, those maybe tiny Mike forgot, right? Maybe Mike Looks like he got uh, max attacks on the giant on those uh, palace guard up top. Dunk. All Dunk right. on them. Let's see it. Seven and ten. Oh. No, oh, that's a dead unit of palace guard. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm. I'm. If I'm like, I'm fist pumping right now. Yeah, exactly. I'm excited. Basically, dude. yeah. You see that <laughs> more turns. Exactly. So he's about to get triple charged, though, right? We we. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he's yeah. fine. He's he's fine. He can take it. He's a big boy, right? So, um, Legend, legendary legendary right. status is being confirmed right now for this. Exactly. He's like, all right, well, action. I can get. I'll take a flank and a front versus just you know a rear. Yeah. So yeah, he's he's out of their out of their arc. So. You know, I mean, he's he's playing as best he can. He's fighting back, right? I mean, that's 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 a Take big victory, minutes. honestly. That's a, that's a you know, again, I talk about what are the chances of these berserker elves killing that overpass are very low. I mean, but, we get a if but, we get they good do. rolls, turn right. seven maybe that exactly. giant. Exactly. I mean, you can you can contest some objectives here. I mean, like that objective behind the wood. That's sure. you know. I mean, they're kind of in the way to get that, but not really. I mean, he maybe fly in that direction yeah. and get it. Um, but then what does that leave the two units in the middle to do, right? Nothing, right? Yeah. They're going to charge a frost giant that's full health. He's actually probably fine. So, um, yeah. you know, actually, actually again, don't this is mind. this is uh, northern northern king scoring. So it's not an attrition differential. It's just how much stuff you kill. So every yeah. unit you pick up does get you closer to getting some more bonus points, whether right. you're trading right. in it to do it or not. I don't care what I said before. I want this cross giant to just dunk on every Basilian. <laughs> right. I mean, it's bottom of turn five. Stop so you have a turn it. six, maybe a turn seven. Maybe that giant picks up two more units for his game's over, right? Yeah. I mean, so who knows, right? Like, you, you can't, you know, and not to mention that, that, that he's kind of out of the way right now. So, right. So, to, to even to punish him, right? right. So, to say, okay, I'm, I'm Mark and I want to punish this giant for sitting here, just sitting in the middle of my army, right? You have to take a charge kind of out of position to kind of do that. So, so um, did you already check the uh, the spearman arc? The uh, yeah, swordsman, the swordsman yeah. arc. That one. The, yeah, they're up. Yeah. Okay. They're just Ooh. out. So uh, looks like the elves kind of just missed getting those ogre palace guard. Oh. With a, with a nine. What did they do? What yeah, they they do? Nine with uh, they did how many wounds there? It looks like uh, five. Is it five or six? I think six, right? Should be should be six wounds. Should be six. Yeah, I think it's four. So the seven plus yeah. nine is, yeah, just shy, yeah, just shy, and that's that's where those couple wounds a turn have made the difference, right? I mean, that's if they were wavered. still where they started at. Oh, they're wavered. Um, I don't. Yeah. Think they... Oh, they, they can wavered. waver. That's right. Yeah. They're not. They're not fearless anymore. They're not fearless anymore. They yeah. absolutely lost that. Which wait wait, but which unit is that? That's the one with Jewus. That one with the Chalice of Wrath. 
That's Chouse of Wrath. Oh, that's not good. That's so it just doesn't it matter. All. That's <laughs> they have that's, theory, right? Yeah, that's, that's so the whole close finish cigar oh. kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the power of artifacts, right? I mean, that's the thing, right? Like you know, he had the right artifacts, at the right moment. Um, he popped the Jabez when he needed him. He popped the Chouse of Wrath. He's got the Chouse of Wrath when he needs it. You know, Mike doesn't have that in his list, and that that's I think you know I think Mike would have been better served finding a way to fit that you know fifty points of items in there sprinkled in. To I mean, really get the units where they needed to do for that. the for the stuff I am disappointed in. It's the the ballistas. I I, sure. was really, <laughs> I was really hoping that they the points invested in those in in an against an army that has almost zero shooting that they would have you know. Right. Done, done a little more, been a little more influential, and they felt. I, I can't mention the ballistas. I had forgot they were in the game. Yeah, Sound, about I, right. I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm just not a fan of ballistas. Like, especially only two of them. Like, if you if you're going for war machines, you go all in and you take three. Um, otherwise, you're just not going to get the value out of them. So they'll, they'll, they'll right. sit back there. They'll pepper stuff, but like you're playing Basilea, you're going to pepper units, and then they're just going to iron resolve it all back. Um, so, so yeah. You I, heard it? You heard it from Mike. He wants more war machines. Being yep, taken exactly. by everyone. If you're gonna go, go big, right? Like drink, drink deeply, or not at all. Sure. I mean, I I, I have to agree with you there. If he took those two war machines out, that's at least what two hundred ish points to play with. I mean, you can do all the artifacts in the world plus another chaff unit, and and you know, <laughs> you can, they're you can... they're 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 ninety five points each. So yeah. he could have gotten more tundra wolves. Right, and then you have Thunder Wolves to put on that right flank, maybe or something. Um, who knows? Yeah, but I, th I, I think the artifacts really is that we should have had room for. It's like I don't know. hate them. I don't hate them. I just like I don't know. I, I in my head, and I know this is it never works out this way on the battle. But in my head, there was this sort of like you get those two plus two breath attacks at the same unit, and and you pick up one of those those little regiments. You pick up a uh, a low high regiment or something, and it it just always seemed like one was shooting at one thing, one was shooting at something else. And they were breathing on a third thing, and against Basilia, that's just not not going to do the work. Right, because because Mark kept kind of getting things up in his face in the middle there, so he couldn't move, and like you you can't really see around or over your own ice elementals with your bolt throwers to necessarily shoot the same thing with them. So yeah, just didn't really come into play. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, I almost. You hate to do it, but I almost would have like thrown them behind the hill and just moved them that first turn, like yeah. sack your first turn shooting and just have them sitting on that hill doing work the rest of this game. But you never I know. Mean, they're they're in a tough spot, right? Like it's it's your your uh, you know you have blast D three. They're yeah they're elite and they hit pretty well, but like they're not doing devastating amounts of damage, right? They're not picking up units right on their own, so. It's like you know, two two is enough to kind of pepper away, but that this facility list is designed to get rid of pepper damage, right? Yeah. So in this, right. in this, you know, in this matchup, I don't know if you knew he was playing against facility list or not. Probably, you know, I assume he wouldn't know that information, but um, even still, it's like you got to assume your opponent has a way to deal with that. So um, it's just tough to find the shooting lanes and the threats you need. Um, I, I kind of agree with, with that. Like this, you know, when I play aggressive list, I find like just go all in, just just you know, you do the mic. I can take a third bolt thrower and just go all in the shooting route, or just drop those bolt throwers and and just you know put more stuff into helps helps you win that front line battle, right? Yeah. Kind of. I, I I I believe Mark did also win the role to pick table side, so he did pick the top and leaves that at the bottom. And I think having that having that hill right there in front of you in the forest. And the impassable there like really cuts down on your on your shooting lanes and your charge lanes. So like it's like like uh, I think Mike was definitely not on the side that he wanted to be on if he was trying to shoot at things with with long range uh, war engines. Yeah, it's understandable. I mean, the thing is that Mike, I know Mike likes to play a pretty um, usually plays pretty elite armies. I would say, um, especially I know he plays a very Varinger army. Um, yeah, but I feel like I feel like you try to hedge his bets a little too much with this Northern Alliance list. It looks to me again that syndrome of kind of like little spread too thin, a lot of different choices, um, not focused enough in the right direction. I think you know that costed him as far as as the list's direction and ability to be effective on the battlefield. Like I think he's been invested like in the aggressive style with the ice yeah. muscles are because ice muscles are great. I think that that's a good core of the list, but. You know, you need to realize that they're going to get a position where they need to charge something, and you need to give them something Wait. to do that. 
We got we got moves. We got spicy oh, moves. We do. Yeah, I think Sorry. I think Mark I, I think Mark just realized it was turn six and that it was better to put his his ogre character on that objective instead of also charging the giant with it. Right. I, right. I always love because because like I accidentally do this where you're like you're so <laughs> right up, like, fighting and killing units you forget that you should be. Right, playing for the scenario, and Play you can the scenario, really see yeah. the moment where that happened, where he's like, "Oh, wait a minute, oops!" Right, sometimes you don't have that undo, undo button in real life, right? You can't undo the last three moves. You, oh shit, I'm already committed to this combat. Whoops, yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think, um, I mean, right now the way it scores it looks like, uh, Mark has <sighs> Mark is sitting on two, four, three, four objectives, and if the one. and and contesting one, so so Mike currently has zero. And Mark is currently sitting on four. If the Urlo, he can manage to get rid of those foxes, he'll have five, uh, which is the max that you so can get. Pretty you, safe you bet, I'd say. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, pretty, pretty devastating win right now for six. Um, and we know, we know the the ogres have the the fury item, right? You confirm that? Yes. Yeah. They. Yeah. And there's the there's the counter charge. Right. Yeah. So he's not working wavered, but he's he's saying, yeah, yeah I'm wavered, but screw you. Good right. lord, that that has to feel so good right now. Right. Having a fury yeah. item on the on the yeah. palace guard that got wavered. I mean, yeah, forward. exactly. Right. Like, they, I mean, it's it's a you know, I think it's a commonish item, right? It's, it's it's obviously a strong choice for them, right? Because they're they're such a powerhouse unit. You need them to to kind of be able to, to keep keep fighting back. Um, it's the it's one of those that a lot of people. In, you don't feel great taking it because it's it's an insurance item, right? It it sure. prevents the bad thing from happening versus creates the good thing. But when those insurance items come up and they right. work, ooh, you feel you're like, oh, I'm such a good list builder. Look at that. Right, right. Well, that's what he said, right? He had a uh, Mike didn't. Mike could have put that same fifty point item on his his unit of clansmen, which which cost I think about the same as a unit of ogre palace guard horde. So. You know, um, one of them had it, the other one didn't, and you saw how how it came into play here. So, um, you know, I, I I really I really like it. I mean, I think I think it's a great item. Um, Fury to me, and if you talk about head, we talk about headstrong, we talk about Fury. I always liked Fury a little better because I think it's a little bit more reliable for what you needed to do. Um, I at least know when I do Fury that um, get my, you know, I'm gonna get the counter charge you when you when you don't. Yeah, it just it doesn't help you against the shooting. Um, right. Yeah, it's got an obvious oh, weakness, right. but. You know, as long as you accept that weakness, you can at least play yeah. around that versus a headstrong. You can't really play around. You just kind of have to mm -hmm. just put your fate into the dice gods and kind of go with it. So um, as I'm talking again, important comments are happening, I think. I see. I see. Yeah, oh, we're no. just starting off with the, okay. the Urolohi onto those foxes. Okay. See if you can pick up that other so objective. Every combat kind of matters here, right? So, so that's going to be five hits. Yikes. Yeah. Uh, with a, with a elite reroll, so it gets all I'll six and six. wounds with oh. all six. Oh. Yeah. Mark if, said, I only uh, care about one roll. Right, right. I, I I like the little ones, man. I, I was I love the little combat. So, um, but no, Mark, I mean I only care about I only care about that. Oh, nerf the nerf. Ball. Got it. Got <laughs> it. Okay, okay. I got you. Yeah. I mean, I, I that that in the day is what the most important role you're gonna roll is is the nerve checks, okay. right? Um, you know, I love I love combats that like where opponent just rolls like piss poor, gets barely any wounds, but then just rolls box cards or something crazy and just kills yeah. the unit. I'm like, okay, like. Well, it, yeah. it you know it kind of works out, right? It's like kind of you know kind of evens itself yeah. out. And I think oh, and sure. I think Mark Mark did roll exactly what he needed. He did six wounds and rolled a five, and those foxes were uh, an eleven to break. So he did get right on it. I think he had done wounds before, though. No, and he no, I think he'd done wounds to the berserkers before. I'm not sure if he actually. No, he did. Do, they were the the foxes were wavered, so he had to. Were they wavered? Them. So they yeah, had they some wounds. Wavered. Yeah, so they, I think I think you're right. Yeah, but um, let's they see. hadn't had wounds. He would have rolled exactly what he needed to that round to get rid of. I right. If he, yeah. If he, and as we say that, the Zerker elves just get obliterated, absolutely yeah. evaporated. Yeah. Exactly. It's like I like that he's there. left the the wavered token on them. Just oh to yeah, like yeah. That's slap that's in the the oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. As you heard, you he just moved them. So yeah, he's. <laughs> I know, but I I love the fact that this this wavered unit is just tooling up your guy. Right. Right. It's like they're technically still wavered, but they're gonna kill you anyways. Right. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, right. Here's the uh, giant so, now. It looks like yeah. Yeah, Mike is like. Mike is down to a giant, an ice queen, and a single bolt thrower. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah. It's, it's he, he's been receiving. Yeah, tough, tough game for him, man. No doubt, he's been receiving out of this, this since turn two, right onwards. So you turn 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 seven, bottom of turn <laughs> six. This uh, giant dunks on another unit. 
the uh, the bolt yeah, thrower. Yeah, ready for it. Uh, yeah, the bolt thrower and the ice queen pick up something somehow. It's happening. Down. Yeah, I mean, let's see here. Three wounds on him. Rim is yeah, three three wounds. He's he's alive, so he's alive he's again. We dash, got there. Yeah, he's dash twenty, and inspiring. So in the dunk. Right. So him is kind of a cool unit, I guess. Right. I mean, he's got the icy breath. Right. I mean, it, in this battle, I mean, did, did he do anything different than a regular giant would have done? Right. Like oh, just... that's an eight. Ooh, that I would get him, but he's inspiring. Oh, so, that that would get him. Oh, oh snap! Oh, I think um, that gets him. Oh no! Oh yeah. no! Hey, <laughs> oh, Mark saying I'm gonna finish this game the way I started, just rolling hot with those nerve right. texts all the way through. Yeah. So that is that is Mike's that. last scoring unit, uh, and we're coming yeah. up on bottom of six now. No, uh, there's not really it's anything. Turned quite ugly. Yeah, quite ugly. Um, yeah. So so really, the only thing Mike can do at this point is like. Pick pick one unit that is holding an objective that he can shoot with both the ice queen and the bolt thrower and try to make him drop one point and get a few more oh, attrition oh, points. The Aloha, oh, yeah. yeah. That's really his only option because it's already got six yeah, wounds. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't even help your score, right? It's like it just—I mean, maybe get more battle, but like this Northern really King system, you almost like you don't even care about stopping your opponent. You just want to try to do something, right? So it's like yeah, victories. That's what we're saying, right? You know? Right. That's yeah, true. It, That's yeah, true. it'll just take. Take one point away and maybe maybe bump you over one of the the thresholds for battle another point. attrition yeah. battle point. Yeah, another attrition yep, battle yep. point. No, so you're you're missing the point. You get to kill an Earl Ohai. No, I believe me, I, I would love killing Earl Ohai. Just the reward. Yes, yes. No, I hear you. And and he's That's not all you need. Did, he's rolling. He's rolling did, dice. Yeah, he's like, he's waiting for putting for the wounds on there. He's just rolling dice. He's saying, yeah. you know. Oof. I resolve. Oh, not enough yet. Yeah. Didn't do enough wounds. And that's going to be turn seven roll, I guess. Oh, I kind of don't know. So, top you of seven. Know. Oh, he rolled oh. the four. There it is. Yeah. yeah so, the for oh, seven. my God. Yeah, you got to <laughs> shake your head here if you're Mike. Mike's saying, like what did I do to deserve this, right? <laughs> why? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Why? Why? Uh, so that's rude. how I feel about turn seven generally is like, you know, you never get it when you need it, and it always happens when you don't want it. Right, right. It's like I'm, I'm not tabled yet. Let's roll. Oh, I got turn seven. Let's see if you can table me. Right. It's like, yeah. you know, I see this Erlo. He's gonna go in, attack the wizard, probably. Yeah. Yep. He, he left him in arc. Why not? Exactly. The, Why not? The Erlo. He is still within range. So. It's all going to come down to that bolt thrower. If that bolt thrower is still alive, maybe it can kill that airline. <laughs> He's going to overrun out of arc. Just to exactly. be no, but, if, but if he does that, he he won't be on that objective anymore. I, I think you I think you push your luck. I think you stand there on the objective and make the bolt thrower shoot you to death. Yeah, who knows? I mean, he's got. I mean, he's got one, two, three. He's, he's leaving one point on the table, right? Or no, one, two. Oh no, sorry, he's got five. Sorry, no, no. He's no, got no. five. He's got five. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that one over on the left is the only one he doesn't have, and I don't see anything he has on the table that he could possibly get over there to it. So No, he's going to so, probably move these guys down and just cl claim that extra objective, right? Just in oh, case. my gosh, he's healing. Oh, he's healing? No. <laughs> oh, he says, no, you're not killing my shit today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Uh, before I the game I would, started, yeah, I would before the game started, we didn't, down. we didn't do picks or anything. No. Who we thought would win? We did not. We did oh, not. We should do it now. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, now. yeah, yeah. I think Mark. I think Mark might take this. I think Mark wins. Um, oh. very controversial. Um, Team Mike very, all the way. Yeah, exactly. I got a roof of Mid Atlantic boy. I mean, I'll pick Mark because he's Canadian, but uh, living in Canada. But right, right. Well, no Canadians. I mean, you guys, you guys have been doing very well. I mean, um, do do Sharks fans count still as Canadians? That I have to consult the. Is there a book on that? Or something? Yeah, that's got to be right. At least he's a hockey fan, right? That's... Well, yeah, I mean, it's Canadian, right? It's kind of a assume, right? Or no? Is that, five, is that not five, true? Five wounds and four. I think that's not going to get that uh, ice queen. She's a 10 Ooh. 12. Oh, wavered. All right. Yeah. Not today. Yeah. I mean, she's she, she, she wasn't going to do anything once she got punched. Anyway, 
Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah that's her the point her phase has been sealed. Um, yeah. She's she's doing nothing yeah. now. We had a bolt to her shot here, and I'm assuming she's there, Lohi. I see two hits. Looks like yeah. blast. No, that's that's a D3 Four. blast. Yep. Yeah. And a couple two, wounds. Looks two like. wounds? Yeah, two yeah. wounds. I see a nerve check. See Five. another nerve check, and and yeah. Go on. Oh, you got it. There you go. I told you, you should have marched out the <laughs> other unit. He should. She cost himself a point here, Mark. Could have could have pushed the unit at the end there to to double up on the objective, but I don't think he cares because he won by a lot of. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that 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 one that one extra bonus point for for that last. Uh, Yes, exactly. yes. Probably probably doesn't matter all that. Exactly. No, very well played game. Um obviously they're both very good players and, and um and I say Mark I, I'm really impressed with Mark's play this game. Very, very strong counterplay. Um again, if you're a Basilia player looking at or aspiring Basilia player, this is a textbook on how to do it. Exactly. Yeah, so Zed Zed has an ice queen and a bolt thrower left. Uh, so the ice queen is 110 points, and a bolt thrower is 95. Uh, so that's going to be going to be a lot. All right. I know you guys were going to check in and check in with the guys, but I have to go to work. So good night, guys. Bye. Yep. Bye. Thanks for coming. coming. Enjoy. Yep. Looks like they're they're totaling up, and they'll be back here in a minute. We'll see. Sounds good. We will, we will get their thoughts on the game. Yeah, I think we definitely want to ask Mike about that turn two charge and and a couple other things. Um, I mean, I don't know if we'll rub it in. We're not trying to rub in the salt here, but <laughs> trying to salt in the wound. But you know, we want to see his thoughts on some of the the way that things went in, especially in like kind of the right side of the board and in the middle, and, and see if he kind of expected that. If he was, you know, why his list kind of doesn't have many items. Again, those are things that you kind of look at now. And how they made a huge impact, and, and whether he thought about that, or whether he's just kind of trying things new, and and, and uh, you know, it went that way. All right, I'm going to bring uh, Mark on in. Hey, Mark. Hello. Hey, congratulations! Uh, and looks like going? looks like Mike is ready as well. So let's bring these guys in. Hi, guys! Thanks for letting us watch your match. Hey, that was Mike. a good time. Yeah. Thank uh, you. So, uh, quick quick wrap up. What are you guys? Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on, on how that game went, on, on how your lists performed? I think I made uh, you want to go first, Mike? Sure. Yeah, I think I, I think I made a mistake early on with the Thunder Wolves going too far forward. So, yeah, we comment on that. Is that something you didn't see when the Ogre Pass Guard charged them? Just no, I, I knew they were there. I was I was figuring I could take the, the Lord into them. Yeah, it wasn't a good move. I, like the Tundra Wolves suck if they're hindered, so I wanted to get them out of the woods. But right, so you're kind of drawing them out, but but maybe uh, underestimating their kind of sustainability, maybe a little bit. No, I I, I knew they would die. I just I, like, I, I the the Dire Fang Lord shouldn't have gone down in one turn. That was yeah. That was right. Uh, right. Yeah. That was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I think Mark is kind of a good role for those guys. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of combats that Mark. You think you got consistently good? We we didn't call it good rolling instead, but like average or above, like where you got yeah. a lot of nerve checks you needed. Yeah, to kind of really seal the deal in a lot of combats that we thought could have gone either way. So, um, that was our thought yeah. here. There was a lot of nerve checks where I needed like seven or eight plus, and I would get them, or uh, it would be like seven twice or something, and I'd get those. So it was just, I mean. Sometimes when you ha have have dice like that, you seem to not be able to do any wrong, and I've been on the other side of that. <laughs> yeah, you, you played great though. Hey. It, you were, you played a little risky with the low high regiments. I, I don't know that that was right, but yeah, the Eloki with this matchup, I thought about just kind of dancing them around for a while and not really committing them anywhere until like turns like four, five, six. Um, but once I got the uh, once like the right flank started to develop the way it was developing, I just wanted to buy more time for my units in the middle to not get hit w with breath attacks every turn, and then to also give more things to think about with the Urlohai coming around the back um, to try to you know present too many targets for for breath plus surge shenanigans. 
Yeah, that definitely seemed to work out. Like like sending them in kind of kind of stalled any sort of advance Mike White might want to do in the middle. Um, whereas like yeah. you seem to be sitting on a whole lot of objectives for for most of the game, and Mike like needing to get across the board to get you, but kept having these these little these little like Alohi units kind of right in his face that he's got to clear first and then he can move forward. Uh, and it seemed like he never yeah. got there. Yeah. And where there wasn't uh, there wasn't any healing um, in the list, so I figured any wounds I can get on now are gonna probably be big later on. So that like if even if I've just got like one paladin unit that is is able to charge a wounded unit later in the game, then any help for them is going to be beneficial. Yeah. And and yeah, Mike, is is this uh is is like Northern Alliance a, a new thing for you since Masters? Are you just trying them out in this tournament? Yeah. Or what's the story? This is my third game with them. They uh, I, I like Varanger a lot, but Northern Alliance is different than Varanger. They don't have the nerve. They, uh, <laughs> like I I, I kind of like the human clansmen, but the, they're point they're two points lower nerve. And I, I never like I never really used Dire Fangs when I was playing Varanger. And the like the, the Sons of Corgan were always better. And uh Yeah, I, I don't know if I like him yet. I, I I like the ice elementals though, they're kinda of fun. Okay. Yeah, I think I think you had some cool plays there. I think Yeah, they're nasty. We noticed um a couple of the items, I think like I noticed that you're you're very artifact light on your list and I think I think he came to play a couple of times that game where, where Mark had like the J boots when he needed it. He had the Chalice of Wrath when he needed it. And your list, you didn't, you know, you, you took multiple hindered charges that didn't go your way. You took a couple of wavered hits that didn't go your way. Um, is that something maybe you'll consider in the future? Like it should put some items in your list or anything like that? Yeah. Right. I don't know. The, the lack of items doesn't bother me so much. I, I, I really miss healing. Like, as you guys know, I typically play a lot of healing, and it's yep. always worked well for me. And this list has no healing. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I was trying to play a different list than I usually play, one that's very aggressive and that can hit hard and break stuff what, what, while having this sort of shooting icy business in the middle. But I don't know. I just, How about that, that pendant? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that worked nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we kind of laughed at the beginning. And I was like, you know, just wait till this guy becomes the pivotal play, and next thing you I, know, I, it's... Could, I couldn't think of a clever way to get around it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. You kind of took it on the chin, hope for the best, right? And, and you know, things happen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, thanks, thanks a lot for letting us spectate on your game, guys. I I, I really appreciate you participating. Yeah, uh, thanks for and, organizing yeah, thanks this podcast. Yeah, no problem. And. Uh, Congrats was, to Mark on the win, and good luck to both of you on the rest of the you. tournament. Yeah, um, I was really rooting for that giant in like turn five, six, seven, and just dunk yeah. on the entire we army. Back there. Against the ogres, and then probably got <laughs> down. I was I was really sad. I I hate to say it, Mark. I'm you know you played a good game, but I was I was hoping that <laughs> giant would just go off and dunk on three units and, and make it make it tight again. <laughs> um, <laughs> He was already going to town and he's one shot that ogre unit. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I, I, like, yeah. his, I like his stats, but in, in in I think all three games I've played, he's gotten sort of bitch slapped like that. And should, shouldn't have died any of it in the game, but yeah, no, yeah. there was a good chance that he should have survived that charge there. Yeah, I just had some some hot nerve. Shouldn't have been. Yeah. Rerollable nine. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was kind of the insult to injury, right? Is that point? But um, yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed watching the game. I think it was definitely good. I think I was, like, it was two very interesting factions, you know, North Alliance and Basilia. I, I, can, I think there's a lot to learn from both sides of that game, uh, watching that as, as a new player and veteran player. So uh, definitely thanks for watching it. Mike, I'm sure you'll bounce back. I know you, you've done well in Call of Arms historically, so... You do well, Mark. Definitely wish you luck in later rounds as well. Yep. Yeah, good luck, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed these. If you're interested uh, in having us stream one of your matches, please let us know. Or if you're checking out the ladder for Call of Arms and there's a match that you think looks particularly interesting that you'd like us to stream, please let us know. We we love getting feedback. Uh, also, if you're interested in maybe guest commentating on one of these, please let me know. 
uh, we're, we're just trying these out to see how they work and what we think of them, what people want to see. So we, we love getting feedback. Also, uh, check out uh, what's going on over at dash28.org. We're publishing articles at a pretty good clip doing uh, unit ranking articles for the various armies, uh, which, which we think is a great uh, discussion point for experienced players and a great uh, entry point for new players. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank everybody for watching and uh, thank my co-commentators, uh, Britton and Alex and uh, Ashley, who had to run. And once again, thank uh, Mike and Mark for letting us spectate their games. And uh, with that, uh, I'm Mike Atkins, and good night, everybody. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. See you later. Thank you.